So for context, I grew up in the suburbs and outside of the occasional play park or sports field, there was really nothing to do. Me and my neighbours used to play knock and run, or its other name, Ding Dong Ditch. For context, I have a sister who is a year younger than me, and my neighbour James was the same age as me. His older sister was 14 at the time, and she also played with us from time to time. Although, I think that she just wanted to hang out with my sister, whom she thought was cute. I was admittedly the biggest coward in the group, and to this day, my flight instinct is significantly stronger than my fight instinct. So, I would never ring the doorbell, as I would always find a way to wiggle out of it. I always found watching it more entertaining than doing it, I suppose. On this particular afternoon, my cousins came over. One of my cousins was my age, the other was a few years younger than me and couldn't play with us, and the other was a year older than me, but everyone treated him like he was an adult, even though he was only 11, which was weird. Or at least, that's how I perceived it, I guess. But his name was Daniel, and he is somewhat important to this story. I'm not a reliable storyteller by any means, as it has been almost 10 years since these events, but... I'll try my hardest to remember them. Anyway, here's what happened. So, my cousins came over and we were banished outside to play, and we all decided that knock and run was a good idea. But we usually just played around our immediate street, never venturing further than the next street over out of fear of getting lost in the copy and pasted suburban streets. But we made our way up the street to the play park on top of the hill, it sat where a house could have been and somewhat could cut across into and onto the next road. As we sat on the play equipment, we decided that a vote should decide who knocked first and, of course, I was picked. I remember getting myself out of it and I got my older cousin to take my place. I am thankful that he was and is proud as he is. It helped me get out of a lot of situations. We decided that our first target would be the fanciest looking house in the area. A white marble house with a fountain in the front yard and a curved driveway. I remember sitting next to a car. I was small enough to look under it from the curb and I had a clear view of my cousin sneaking up to the door and ringing the doorbell three times in order to get the attention of whoever was inside and he bolted down the pathway towards the street to hide behind the cars. But before he got to the fence, an older man in a black leather apron with what I assumed was paint came sprinting after him. I immediately knew that something was wrong. This wasn't the usual response to a knock and run. Sure, we've encountered some angry people before, but this was something different. He practically flew down the walkway towards Daniel and threw his hand out to grab him. This didn't feel like anything someone his age could do, in fact, and... It scared all of us a lot. I think I might have been the only one with a clear view of what was going on in the end, which meant that I was the first to see what was happening. It wasn't until the man was practically on top of Daniel that he noticed that he was being chased, and the scream that he made when he realized will always stick with me. As I said at the start of this, Daniel was and is still a very proud person, who will always try to prove himself. So, hearing this scream of pure terror really struck at my core. Everyone was clued in at this point as to what was happening. Daniel didn't open the waist-high gate at the end of the path. He just jumped it, which I think ultimately saved him from getting hurt as the old man had taken a second to open it. Daniel was sprinting down the street as fast as I had ever seen him. The guy was yelling at him and... He had a deep and angry voice, which did actually stop Daniel in his tracks. They were both standing in the middle of the road at this point, reminding me of sort of an old western movie when two cowboys would be standing at either end of the main road. The man marched straight up into Daniel's face, and I could finally get a good look at him. His skin resembled rough leather, and the few strands of hair on his head had long since greyed. He was clean shaven and he was wearing white pants, a white button up and a black leather apron that had what I rationalized as red paint on it. After he was maybe a half a foot from Daniel, he started to berate him and I could only make out the words, sick people in there. 
Everything about this man threw me off and I could see my neighbor and my other cousin who was hiding in the bushes felt the same. My neighbor's older sister, whom I'll call Tay, screamed out at him from the other side of the road, which gave Daniel the opportunity to run as fast as he could away from the man. We all ran at this point. I don't think I or anyone else knew where we were running off to, but I found myself in the car park of the shopping center across the road from me. I waited there for maybe 30 minutes, just watching cars come in and out, feeling safer with a large group of people. I had no idea at the time if he chased one of us, but I knew that I was safe. I made my way back to my house and found that I was the last one to return, apparently. My cousin Daniel, he ran straight home and Tay followed him. My other cousin and neighbor ran around the suburbs for a bit before deciding to go home. My mum was missing when I got home and I realized that she had been told about what had happened. My mother is someone who isn't afraid of protecting her own and she is one of the strongest people that I know so I felt pretty safe that she was aware and was off telling him to get lost but when she got back she seemed a bit off. She didn't want to talk about it or anything and any color from her face had completely drained. We slept at my neighbor's house that night because my mum wanted to talk to my dad about something serious and I think that we all knew what it was about. Nothing really happened for a while after that too. Not for a while anyway, but my mum was a lot more protective, I guess, of what we did outside. We were no longer allowed to play knock and run or go up the road without a parent. It really bugged my sister, who loved to play outside, but I don't think she fully understood what actually happened. But before I get on to the next set of events, I think it's important to address some things. I know that we were the ones who originally disturbed him. Look, I get that, but I think it's important to know about how this all sort of kicked off. First things first too, I did promise some people that I would ask my mum what the old man had told her that last night at dinner and I did manage to do so. She was surprised that I remembered what happened and tried to sweep it under the rug initially but I kept pressing her for answers. I'm not proud of pressuring my mother into talking to me about something like this but I guess curiosity got the better of me. I know that it isn't an excuse, but I feel somewhat justified by my actions, I guess. Anyway, after I pressed her for more answers, she grabbed my arm and led me to my room before placing me on my bed. She sat next to me and told me not to repeat anything of what she was about to say to my sister, my cousins, or anyone else who was involved with this man throughout that year. She finally opened up about how she was sitting at home watching TV when she heard a loud knock on the front door. It was my cousin Daniel and my neighbor Tay who looked terrified and exhausted. After letting them in and grilling them for answers, my mum was rightfully pretty ticked off that someone had spoken to them in such a way and so she got up to go and confront the man and on her way out, my other cousin and neighbor arrived whom she also sent inside. She was initially concerned about where I was, but Daniel made it clear that I ran in the opposite direction of the man and that he would go looking for me, which he didn't in the end. My mum made her way up the play park and saw the man pacing back and forth up and down in his driveway. He didn't seem angry or upset, I guess. He apparently didn't seem like anything besides someone marching back and forth, which took my mother's mood from enraged to sort of confused. She walked up to the front gate and let herself in, which made the man almost stop immediately and stare at her. I'm surprised that she didn't turn back and go home at this point, because that's what I and what I imagine anyone would have done. But as I said before, I am a bit of a coward after all, so yeah, there is that. Anyway, the man marched up to my mom and started to berate with her about trespassing on his property which she met by berating him about terrifying some kids. This apparently went on for a couple of minutes before he said something that honestly terrified her. My mum didn't say exactly what he said because she said that she was trying to forget it, but he said something along the lines of, I'll show both of you what it feels like to have somebody on your property when you don't want them there, and then I'll shut those kids up forever. 
He also tried to grab her at that point, but she quickly moved away and left his yard, swiftly walking back home. And this really affected my mom. But that was the answer that I got from her. I gave her a hug and apologized for pressing her to tell me, and we got back to dinner shortly after this. I don't regret her telling me, but it just feels like knowing the end of a movie and seeing all of the hints leading up to it, I guess, recontextualizing a lot of stuff. But anyway, it had been about a month, maybe a, a month and a half since the first initial incident with the man. We hadn't seen him since then, and I had pretty much forgotten about it until I went to the shops one day. My parents had started to let me go to the shops by myself to grab little things for them, I was young at the time and the shops were across the road from me so getting there wasn't really an issue. But one day my dad asked me to go and grab a loaf of bread for him. He gave me a $2 coin and sent me on my way to the shops. I was getting used to doing this on my own and enjoying my independence a bit. I grabbed the bread which was on the far side of the large supermarket and made my way towards the registers. I stopped by the toy aisle and took a look at all the low quality mass produced action figures that I desperately wanted at that time. This was part of my routine. In fact, even now if I wanted something but didn't have money to get it, I would just take a look at it. But on this occasion, honestly I really wish that I would have just continued on to the registers because I felt two hands push me to the ground from my left. I was shocked for a moment as I didn't fully know what had just happened. The sticky and dusty floor beneath me really hurt. It took me a second to look at my attacker and when I did, I immediately knew that something was very wrong. It was the old man from up the road. He had found me in the place that I had initially hid from him just a month prior. He started to shout at me but I really couldn't understand what he was saying. I don't know if it was the adrenaline ringing in my ears or his rage just taking over, but the tone in which he was shouting shook me. I tried to get up and run. When I planted my foot on the ground to get up, he kicked it from below me, which made me fall back onto the ground. Thank the Lord that a staff member arrived at this point. They must have heard his shouting from across the store and came to check on what was happening. I never got a good look at the staff member, but I am thankful for whoever they are. As I got up to run with the loaf of bread in my hand, I could hear the man reacting to me getting away and it took everything in me to not look behind me to look at him, but I knew that he was absolutely furious just based off of his tone. I ran straight out of the store with the bread without realizing it and I almost threw up from all of the emotions. I told my parents when I got home and they both made it clear that I wouldn't be going on any shopping trips by myself from here on out. However, they didn't think about how me and my sister walked together to school, which in hindsight should have been something that they thought of. Now, the trip to my school wasn't a long one by any means. It was just over a kilometer long or just over half a mile, but the trip was still tough on my small legs. There were quite a few hills which added time to our trip there and the path went along a sort of creek with nothing around it. It was actually quite nice and pretty isolated, which honestly helped me relax my mind after school a lot. But not long after the supermarket incident, me and my sister were walking home from school and just made our way to the beginning of the path along the creek when we saw an SUV that had been parked there for what I assumed had been a while. I thought that it was empty initially, but as you can probably guess, it wasn't. We turned to enter the creek when the SUV car door opened and we heard someone shouting at us like, hey, do you guys want to drive home? Instantly, I recognized that voice too. It was the man. My sister, who was always trusting of others, started to walk towards the truck, but I quickly held her back. What's wrong? The man said in a cheerful tone. This was very different from the unintelligible screaming from just the week before, and I obviously wanted nothing to do with this man. I quickly started to lead my sister towards the creek, and the man quickly scooted over towards the door. Wait up, I'll walk you home, he said. I should have run up the hill towards the school, but 
Instead, I started to sprint down the creek. Looking back at this, I feel really stupid for doing this. Daniel was faster than me and the man had been able to catch up with him in seconds. But for some reason, he didn't leave his truck. All I heard was another unintelligible scream and his truck driving away. My sister was beyond angry that we didn't get a ride home and that we had to walk, but I didn't care. She and I were safe and so we continued walking along the path. Thinking back on it, the path was beautiful and connected on either side to small quiet streets, the perfect in-between of isolation. Sadly, my young mind didn't realize that the creek opened to two quiet streets and so when I saw that same silver SUV on the street at the end of the path, I just froze. What could I have done? I felt powerless and had to take care of my sister, who was only now figuring out that this man may not actually have good intentions. I decided that the best course of action was to cross the creek and walk through the bushes to the other side. This was a beyond dangerous idea as there were slippery rocks, animals and running water as well. This very easily could have injured or even killed us but somehow we managed. We climbed over logs of wood and under tree branches, through prickly bushes and through large plants but we managed to do it and cross over to the other road that we followed towards the main road, which took us home. Now, obviously those two SUVs, they could have been different, but at the time I remember that I was absolutely certain that they were the same. And even now I'm not 100% sure if they were actually different. I only found out about this later, but my parents got the police involved at this point. But based on the fact that more stuff had happened... I'm going to say that they probably didn't do much. There were a few other things that happened throughout this time too, like mail being stolen, our bins being pushed over, the front door knocking at early hours of the morning that we knew was him, although we really didn't have any real proof. But the last thing that I'll bring up before I end this is something that I'm not 100% sure was a dream or not. For context, my dad used to have campouts with me and my sister. We would sleep out on the couch and my dad would sleep on a mattress on the floor. The couches that we would sleep on were right next to the front door in the living room and we would watch movies with pizza or some other type of takeaway. It was really fun and I remember those nights fondly but one particular night will stick with me forever. Everyone else had gone to sleep at this point and Naruto was on. I hadn't watched or read Naruto at that point, but I recognized the characters. I was sitting directly next to the large window that sort of looked out into the driveway. I was just enjoying doing nothing when I saw some movement out on the driveway. I looked out there and there he was, walking up to our front door, wearing his white pants and white button-up t-shirt. He was staring directly at our front door with such focus that... It felt like nothing would break it, but something did, and it was me. He looked at me, and I could see in his eyes that it was sort of funny to him. He simply held his hand up, waved at me, and then placed one finger on his mouth as if he were telling me to shush, and then he jogged away. I surprisingly fell asleep not long after this, and for the longest time I thought that it was a dream until I read all of Naruto and recognized the scene that I remember playing. It was then that I realized that it might not actually have been a dream and that he might have been attempting something and after what my mum had told me, I think I know what he was trying to do. Tonight's episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. So, do you ever find that just as you're trying to fall asleep, your brain suddenly just won't stop talking? Do your thoughts start racing right before bed, or at other inopportune moments? My brain seems to be hardwired this way. For instance, I remember when I was about to undergo my exams for uni back in the day, I couldn't find a way to sleep for about 48 hours. My brain just wouldn't shut off and I kept thinking about everything over and over again. Well... It turns out, one great way to make those racing thoughts go away is to talk them through. 
Therapy gives you a place to do that, so you can get out of your negative thought cycles and find some mental and emotional peace. I know from personal experience that therapy has a lot of benefits. For instance, just being able to get things off of my mind, you know, like put it out there in the world and just not keep it in my head, it helped me to really control my thoughts so that I could finally get some sleep. So, if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Get a break from your thoughts with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash scared today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash scared. When I was in high school, my friend Claire came to sleep over. We made some plans to sneak out and hang out with some guys, and then one of them would drive us home. We go out to my friend's apartment, have some fun, and around midnight we decided that it's time for us to head back. But when we ask to be taken back, everyone says no, despite previously agreeing to bring us back. Everyone said that they were too drunk or too high, so eventually we decided to just start walking back, and we would make some phone calls to see if anyone could pick us up and bring us the rest of the way back. My house was a good 20 minutes away by car on the highway, so there was no way that we were walking all the way back. The apartment was towards the back of the complex though, so we start making our way to the entrance. We don't even get halfway there before a car sort of slowly starts rolling up behind us. I was 15 or 16 at the time and very naive to the ways of the world, so I wasn't too concerned. But Claire, she was a bit smarter than me on this night. She tells me to start walking quickly, so we start walking faster. The car also picks up their pace behind us. Again, she tells me to walk faster, so we start moving as fast as we can, and that's when the car pulled slightly in front of us, and two of the passenger doors open, and two men get out. Realizing that there's no walking faster to get out of this situation now, she instructs me to run, so she takes off running and I follow her. She runs towards a group of parked cars and jumps behind a pickup truck, and for a minute, we just hope and pray that we weren't spotted. This is where details get a little fuzzy for me because this was like 10 years ago, but one of them must have gotten back into the car at some point, as there's only one of them following us behind the truck. We hear a set of footsteps quickly approaching and she quietly indicates that we're now going into stealth mode. This man is on the other side of the truck that we're now hiding behind. He's circling the truck looking for us and we're sort of slowly and quietly circling it on the opposite side to avoid being spotted. It felt like a scene from a movie or a video game but we somehow managed to do two or three circles around the vehicle without being detected and by the grace of the gods, he gives up and decided to go back to the car with his buddy. This is our one shot to get away. She tells me to run again, so we run for what felt like an eternity, but in reality was probably only 15 to 20 seconds. We find the pool house area and find a spot to hide. We were hiding behind some fences and bushes and were anxiously waiting to see if they discovered us. Their car pulls around to the pool house and... We're biting our nails hoping that they don't stop and get out. The car slowly drives away and we realize that, thankfully, we haven't been spotted. We were safe for now, but the car circled around the apartment complex for hours. They just seemed to refuse giving up looking for us. We were safe for the time being, but now we needed to find a way out of there. It was the middle of winter and, of course, we were dressed to impress the guys that we went to hang out with, so short shorts and revealing tops, and we were freezing. Eventually, we found a dirty, disgusting Captain America blanket that we huddled up under while making phone calls to find someone to pick us up. We tried contacting the guys at the apartment, but nobody answered our calls. None of our friends even answered our calls, too. We felt completely alone and hopeless at this point. But at around 5am, someone finally answered and said that they would pick us up. 
and that was the best news that I had ever heard, perhaps in my entire life. Our friend eventually gets to the apartment complex, but they can't find the pool house. The group of men are still constantly circling around, so there's no way that we're coming out of hiding. We manage to figure out where our friend is at with a little bit of detective work, figuring out what building they're facing, what's in front of them, are there dumpsters nearby, etc, etc. We figure out exactly where they are, so we make a run for it. We spot their car and we hop in as quickly as we can. We tell them to go and our friend speeds off towards the entrance. We pass the group of men on the way out and that was thankfully the last we saw of them. We made it back at around 6 in the morning, just in time to sneak back without my parents ever knowing that we even left. If Claire hadn't have been with me that night, I do think that I would have been abducted, perhaps sexually assaulted, and who knows, maybe even possibly killed. I'm really thankful for Claire and our friend that picked us up that day, but it's a big middle finger to the adult men who we went to hang out with as teenagers, but especially to the guys that intended to harm us. On a happier note, I'm now very diligent and aware of my surroundings, and we washed the dirty Captain America blanket and shared custody of it for years after this encounter as a, a bit of a reminder of that night. In the end, thankfully, we were able to get out of that situation unscathed, but we definitely learned some pretty important lessons that day. My old house was always creepy. I remember at a very young age, about six years old, being super excited as a vicar was coming around to talk with my mother. She suffered severe mental health all her life and, at the time, was looking to religion for help. Unfortunately for me, his visit was after my bedtime, but I couldn't sleep in hope that I'd be allowed downstairs. I was just one of those kids that always wanted to meet new people. Eventually, I heard someone walking up the stairs. The house was very old and very creaky, and towards my bedroom. My bedroom door opened, and I listened as the floorboards made their usual noise as someone was walking across my bedroom, but there was nobody there. I had a nightlight on in my room, so I could see very well. That sort of thing would happen quite often, usually just opening my bedroom door and the feeling of being watched. I can't say that I was scared back then, but I did realize that it was strange. Fairly uneventful experiences until 1995, and then I remember it like it was yesterday. Now, I was 15 years old and home alone. My parents had long since divorced. My dad, who I lived with, was spending the night with my now stepmother, who lived two streets away. We were moving from the house and I was packing up my bedroom. It should have been anyway, but basically I was watching wrestling. At about midnight, I went to bed, was reading a magazine, and suddenly I felt the most awful fear and became extremely nauseous. My dog and cat were in the bedroom with me. My dog began hysterically whining and barking at the whole room. She even peed on the floor, which she never did. My cat was in the windowsill with her face pressed against the curtain and was crying pitifully. I suddenly realized I was being watched from the corner of the room as my dog barked and backed off of that part of the room. I couldn't even lift my head to look as the fear was disabling to me, but eventually I was able to get up and run for it. The worst part of it all was... I felt this presence right behind me. I got to the front room and rang my father that he needed to get here very fast. I was terrified beyond words with this unexplainable feeling of fear of being stared at. It was actually sort of painful. I know it makes no sense now, but that's how it felt at the time. I don't know how I managed to unlock the front door and run into the street and fell into the middle of the road all the time being watched by something which was now in the doorway staring. What it looked like, I have no idea. It's like my brain just never put two and two together. 
My poor dog, though, was stuck halfway on the stairs, crying and terrified. As my dad arrived, he was able to go and get her, and I never went back into that house ever again after that. My dad talked to me the next day and said that his experiences in that house were pretty bad, too. For instance, he'd always nag me to hold the banister coming downstairs. He told me the reason being that he'd often be grabbed and tripped. He said upstairs of the house was by far the worst, and he never mentioned it to me as he didn't want to scare me. There was also this reoccurring dream as well. I'd say that it started a year or so after leaving the house, 1996-ish. It started with me coming home from school, sunny day, feeling very happy, going into the front room of the house and everything seems good. Then I walk towards the back of the house, into the kitchen and it's heavily raining and getting very dark outside. I now head outside in the garden and there's a storm outside. I'm getting absolutely drenched and the wind is hammering me and I suddenly realize that I'm sobbing uncontrollably. Then this feeling overcomes me. I'm facing away from the house and I can feel that I'm being watched from my bedroom window. My bedroom window looked out towards the garden. I finally brace myself and get the courage and turn towards the house to look at this thing and each time I would always wake up. But about 15 years ago, I'd usually have this dream like two or three times a month. I had the dream again. I turned around, and this time, I made eye contact and saw that it was the same face that had chased me out of the house all those years ago. I woke up and I instantly forgot the face, and that was the last, that was the last time that I ever had that dream. I never experienced anything like this since, and to be honest, I really hope that I never do. It was terrifying, and I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. So I recently started working at a 911 dispatcher at a police department in Oklahoma, and I really love it. Tonight, one of my co-workers was talking to me about ghosts, and I told him that I didn't really believe in them. And he said, oh, you will. And later on that night, it was about 3 a.m., the 911 phone rings. This is not a landline, it only answers and rings for 911. He says, come and get this phone. So, I do. I answer the call, and immediately I hear heavy breathing. I proceed to ask if they can hear me who is calling, and after 43 seconds, they hang up. He laughs and turns and points to the map. This phone number was a landline and was plotted in the middle of an old base camp cemetery just outside of town. Nobody lives within five miles of this place. The mapping on 911 landlines is always within five inches of the caller. It's really accurate. He then told me to redial the number, I did, and the number is not available. He then proceeds to tell me that this happens every night. The supervising officer came in and I asked him how long this had happened, and he said every night for at least 23 years. That's how long he's been there for anyway. They used to send officers out apparently, but it's gated and they've checked everything and there's nobody there. So... Somebody calls 911 from an abandoned cemetery every night from a landline number that isn't available for over 20 years? This is real too. I'm not kidding. I saw and heard this happen tonight even and I'm in shock. No way a prank has gone on this long. There's no way that a landline cord reaches 5 miles in length to even reach the cemetery. The calls change times too, like tonight it was at 3.07am, but it ranges from midnight to 4am every single night. This is an abandoned burial ground, mind you, so there's really nothing there. If you've got any explanations for this, then I'm all ears because this whole thing just seems absolutely crazy to me. This happened to me just this morning and 
While I don't know if this is a really big deal, I have a bit of a hunch that it might be. So, I walk to the bus stop every morning to go to work at around 6 in the morning, and today was a particularly dark morning. It was freezing and it had been raining. My street is the last one in the neighborhood. Behind my street is just the woods, no houses or street or anything. And for the seven months that I've been working there, no one in my street really goes out to work at the same time as me. Only one guy in the next street that sometimes goes out in a hurry. Today though, I was walking, just had crossed my street, and all of a sudden I hear a noise not too far from me. When I turn back, there's like an older guy, I'm female and 23, trying to walk silently behind me. He doesn't look like he's going to work. He has no backpack with him and not even an umbrella. It was raining. Apparently, he got out onto my own street at the exact same time as me. Like, maybe he was waiting for me to get out of the house. He was walking slowly, but when I started to walk faster, I looked behind me and he was walking faster too. So I kind of ran a little, terrified with my little taser that I always carry in my backpack, until I get to the bus stop where some guys always wait for the bus with me. I waited to see if the creep would show up in front of the bus stop. If he was going somewhere, he would have to pass the bus stop because there's really no other way to go out. But he never did. I guess he must have given up when I ran. The worst part about this, though, is that I do know that there's an old creep in my neighborhood that was apparently in jail for being a serial rapist in like the 90s. He served his sentence and today is a free man, but like last month he was asking my mum to take care of our garden and he kept creeping around the house when my dad was at work. I don't know if it was him today because it was dark, but he's the first one that came to mind and something tells me that it was him. I was 17, I went to a concert with my friend. The concert was in the main city, I lived about 40 minutes drive away. I told my mother that my friend's parent would be giving me a ride home, because there was no way that my mother would have let me make my own way home during the night. When I think about it now, I really don't know why I lied. My friend was getting a bus home that left her right outside of her place. If my mother thought that I was getting a ride, she would have picked me up herself, but I think that I was just trying to be independent, I guess, and I didn't think that there would be any trouble because I was getting the tram, which would leave me a 10-minute walk from home, and it was a Friday, so I thought that there would be a lot of people getting off the tram at the same stop as me and would have to walk even further to get home, but I was wrong. There was barely anyone on the tram. I took notice of this too because I got in the tram hundreds of times by now and I thought that I could handle myself. I was a physically strong girl and I was about 5'8 at that time, which was considered tall. I just put my earphones on and I listened to music like I always did on public transport. I got to my stop and got off and started walking home. But there was someone walking behind me. It was a man. I couldn't see his face. It was kind of dark and he had his hood up. From the way that he was built, I'd say he was maybe in his 30s. He was around the same height as me and visibly more muscular. I still didn't think anything of it because I live in a very populated place after all. The town has like 40,000 people and the housing complex that I lived at had hundreds of houses. There was only really one route to get out of the tram stop and into the main town because it was beside the motorway. Once I had gotten by the highway, I suddenly had a, a weird feeling. The guy was staying back and purposely sort of staying behind me. I could just feel the eyes burning into the back of my neck and it was only then that I thought that something was off. But I told myself to... Just stop overreacting because we all have to go through the same route and my housing complex was the closest complex to the tram stop. I picked up my pace and I prayed that there would be no traffic lights that had to be followed. I didn't want him catching up to me after all. 
I had the urge to increase the music volume on my earphones to be more oblivious to it, I guess. But my gut was wrenching, telling me not to do this. After what felt like hours, but was probably only five minutes, I finally got to my housing complex. There's different lanes and twists and turns for each house cluster in the complex. To get to my house, there's a lot of sharp turns and even a steep hill. I thought that once I got to the entrance of the complex, the man would just walk by. But in the end, he didn't. He was actually catching up to me now. He was walking faster and like he had something to get to. That something probably being me. It was literally like a predator stalking prey and this was the point that he was ready to pounce. I wanted to stay calm. I mean, I wasn't a great runner and my shoes weren't exactly ideal for running either. If I ran, my chances of getting home would definitely decrease. I felt in my pocket for my keys, making sure that I'd have them ready to unlock the door, or in the worst case scenario, as a weapon. I was still trying to convince myself that maybe he lived in a complex as well. But I knew that he didn't live at my housing cluster. Well, we all knew our neighbors. I had the sharp turn ahead. It was only steps away. I was praying once I got there that they would just go in another direction to the other cluster of houses. I got to the sharp turn and I was ready to let out a sigh of relief and call myself an idiot until I heard his steps. They were getting quicker now, louder and heavier. My house was in reach. It was only down the hill. If I sprinted, I would be there in 30 seconds, but I didn't want to chase down to my door. I walked faster, not too fast to let him know that I had alarm bells screaming in my head, but not too relaxed to get caught either. I could hear my breathing hitching. I was finally walking down the hill. I didn't hear any steps anymore. I was finally at the last turn and once I got there, I saw him. Out of the corner of my eye, he was standing at the top of the hill, just watching. At that point, it couldn't have been any more obvious that I wasn't being paranoid. I walked down the turn, my house was out of sight from the hill, I still heard no footsteps. I finally got to the point where I was unlocking my door, stepping inside and locking the door from the inside. I was finally safe. I didn't notice either until I was in my house just how much sweat was dropping from my forehead and my lip. I didn't notice how much I was shaking or just how difficult it was to really breathe, but it was okay. I was home and I was in my home with my two parents in arm's reach. Thankfully, I never saw that person again and I think I just sort of blocked it out in the end. I just kept denying how terrifying the encounter actually was, I guess. I once again just kept pinning it to my general paranoia. It wasn't until I was in my late 20s that I could look back on it and see what a dangerous situation that I was actually in. Every time that I think about it, it feels like my blood drains from my body. It was a really scary moment in my life and something I really don't like to dwell on. I'm sharing this while the incident is still fresh in my mind. It occurred around midnight of Saturday, September 2nd, and each day that goes by I feel more unsure about what I really heard that night. To preface, this took place in the Olympic Peninsula along the Hood Canal. My girlfriend's parents recently bought a beautiful riverfront property in a rural area down a private gravel road that has a few other houses here and there. Their property is heavily forested on all sides, though the neighbor's houses are vaguely visible to both the left and right. The night though was winding down after watching a movie. Everyone had gone to sleep while I lay awake playing on my phone. The windows were open, letting in the pleasant sound of the river bubbling outside. And around close to midnight, I would say, I started hearing splashing in the river, which startled my dog, but was easily explainable as elk or deer crossing the river since the area is pretty wild. However, after the splashing subsided, I started hearing a repeated animal cry that sounded like a sort of bellow fixed with a scream or a yell. It's hard to remember exactly at this point in time, but it was deep. 
not like a cougar or fox screaming and also fast in cadence. Definitely odd, but still explainable as an animal. This happened for maybe 10 minutes or so, intermittently with what sounded like a, a huffing or a snorting sound. I was alert at this point, listening and trying to calm my dog who was unsettled by the sound as well. As I listened, it started moving closer. At first it sounded like it was across the river, but now on the right side of the house. But as it moved closer, it just suddenly transformed into what sounded like a, a human screaming help in the most deranged and unsettling way possible. Like it was screaming help but couldn't quite form or enunciate the words correctly. It literally gives me goosebumps thinking about it right now. At this point, I was just thinking, what the heck is that? And woke up my girlfriend. We listened together in silence and rushed to wake up her parents when we both heard a pronounced help in the scream this time. Both dogs started going ballistic and the screaming stopped at some point in the commotion, so her parents didn't get a good grasp on the sound. After shining flashlights out the windows, we went downstairs and made sure that all the doors and all the windows were locked. After a sleepless night, we woke up and walked the perimeter of the property and found no sign of animals or humans. Quite honestly too, I was half expecting to see bloody human remains or something with how intense the screams were. I imagine that that's what a person being axe murdered might sound like in fact. But at this point, I really regret not going outside, armed, to investigate. As I've spent the past two days constantly racking my brain, trying to figure out exactly what the heck that was. I've been looking into every animal sound out there and... I haven't found a single thing that actually sounds similar to what we heard that night. I'd probably think that I would have imagined the whole thing if my girlfriend wouldn't have heard it as well. I would love to hear any thoughts or any similar experiences from this community because I am just definitely a little bit rattled. This started around five years ago, shortly after my youngest turned one. I've always been sensitive, I guess, but this had started to frighten me. One night, I was getting ready to put my youngest to bed. He had fallen asleep on the couch at some point. We kept all the bedroom doors closed at that time, as he was walking and had already brained himself on the door multiple times trying to close it. I had picked him up and asked my middle, three-year-old male at the time, to please open the door for me. As I waited for him to come into the hall, I watched as the bedroom door clicked open and swung into the room. I had frozen in shock and only snapped out of it when my middle had asked why I asked him to open the door that was already open. I had shrugged the question off at the time, telling him that I was sorry I forgot I had already opened it. No door in my house just swings open like that though. It stays exactly where you leave it. When I told my husband, he brushed it off saying that I must have imagined it or there was a breeze that pushed it open or something. The next day though, I tested it, wanting to be sure what I saw. I left it cracked open and carried my youngest back into the same area and the door didn't move this time. I opened the windows and the door still didn't move. Over the last five years, I've seen and heard many things happening in my house. I would be happy to share these at some point, but as no one else sees or hears it, they always brush it off and tell me that I'm imagining things. That is, until this last week. I had given up trying to explain what I was seeing and hearing to my family as they didn't believe me. I had gone to take a shower and my husband was watching a movie and eating ice cream with the kids. The lights were off because, well, you can't really have a movie night in a lit room, right? When my daughter came back from putting her bowl into the kitchen, she sat down next to her dad, and as soon as she pulled her feet onto the couch, the lamp in the corner of the room turned on. My husband, being the skeptical man that he is, thought that it was my middle child. He asks if he was behind the couch, and seconds later, he walks into the room from the kitchen. Now, this lamp is a crank lamp, 
you have to really turn the dial for it to light up like that. I had turned it off before getting into the shower as I knew that they would start the movie without me. And when I left the bathroom, my husband looks at me and says, I think you were right about the ghost. He pulled up the security camera footage and you can clearly see the light turn on. You can hear him ask for my middle child and see him enter the room a few seconds later too. Now I feel a bit smug that I'll no longer be called crazy, but the activity has picked up quite a bit in the last year and has started to make me feel a bit uneasy, especially since my youngest has started seeing the same figure that I see in his bedroom. This was when my sister and I were younger, her being eight and I being ten. We used to live in a two-bed, two-bath apartment. I remember always feeling uneasy and just seeing things from the corner of my eye. We watched a lot of Ghost Whisperer, a family of three back then as well. And well, one night I remember abruptly waking up from my sleep and shooting straight up in bed. It took some time for my eyes to adjust, but... I vividly remember seeing this all-white figure. It was shaped like a woman and was a bit transparent as well. And from what I could tell, she wore an old Victorian-style dress. The ones that they made that made the bud more pronounced. And she held an umbrella that looked to have had lace on the trimmings. It was such a vivid sight that I still think about it every now and then. Anyway, I see her gliding to my sister's part of the bed and she had bent down so slowly that it almost was barely noticeable at first. Eventually though, she was face to face with my sleeping sister. I remember though fixating on her empty face, like there was nothing where there should have been a face. As I'm trying to find even a slight facial feature, I just felt like she wasn't even looking at my sister at that point but me. She stayed in that position, not budging even the slightest. I remember feeling panicked, almost like I wasn't supposed to witness what I had seen. I remember feeling as if time had stopped whilst I was trying my best to go unnoticed in laying back down, and once I was, I immediately pulled the covers over my head just in case she planned to be face to face with me as well. I didn't want to wake up seeing that. Once the morning came around, I wanted to ask my sister if she heard or saw anything the night before. I was really conflicted with her being so young. I didn't want to scare her, but I just had to know. I said something along the lines of, Did you wake up in the middle of the night too? And I kid you not, she told me that she was scared to tell me that there was a woman who was just staring at me. I had asked her to describe the woman and... She gave me the same description, all white, puffy sort of dress with an umbrella, and of course, no face. I had asked her to tell me as much as she remembered, and she told me that she woke up shooting straight up in bed, and looking on my side, she saw the woman already bent down face to face with me. She said that she felt like the woman was nice though, because she felt like it had no harm for me or her, so she simply turned over and went back to sleep. Of course, I was freaked out by what my eight-year-old sister had just told me because up until then, I was really thinking that it was because of the ghost shows that we constantly watched together. We spoke about it a while ago and she says that she still remembers how she looks as well. It's something that I don't think either of us will ever forget. This happened back in 2020. I'm a female and was 19 at the time, and my mum used to be a baker. She needed some chocolates for decoration or something. Since my siblings were asleep, my mum asked me to go and get some from the nearby shop. As it was close by, I thought that I would just walk. Most of the shops that I went to were closed due to an ongoing strike. Unfortunately, I was unaware of it, and the ones that were open didn't have the brand of chocolate that my mum wanted. Due to the strike, the place looked a bit like a ghost town, with not a soul in sight. 
I was determined to get that chocolate though, so I walked a bit farther, but still had no luck. Finally, in the end, I decided to head home. I could reach home either by a long route or a short one. Since the short route includes trespassing through the neighbor's property, I chose the long one instead, mainly because I didn't want to cause any inconvenience to them. Anyway, as I was walking, a van with two men passed me and stopped right in the middle of the road, a couple of meters ahead of me. I didn't think too much of it because I assumed that they might be lost and looking for directions. Suddenly though, the man sitting in the passenger seat stuck his head out of the window, turned back and looked at me. His gaze moved in a way that he examined me from head to toe. He then gave me a creepy smile and sat back. I immediately thought to myself, why did he look at me so weirdly? But since it seemed physically harmless, I brushed it off and I just continued walking. Now, the back of the van had this sort of large see-through window, which I could see both men talking to each other right after the creepy gesture from. As I was about to reach the back of the van, the driver did the exact same thing as the guy in the passenger seat. He stuck his head out, turned back to look at me, and sat back, all while smiling creepily. That's when my alarm bells started to ring and I quickly moved away from there. Fortunately, this happened right beside the short route. I immediately changed my direction and started walking towards the short route, which was a narrow path. At some point between this moment and reaching the short path, I heard the back door van open and I looked back and saw that one of them seemed to be about to get out and was now poised at the door, seemingly ready to chase me. As soon as they noticed me taking a different route though, they quickly closed the door and then they suddenly sped off. I was quite shaken up by this, especially by the fact that they sped off at the very moment that I took the short route. I cannot be sure about exactly what that was all about, but considering the area looked pretty deserted and me being a pretty skinny person, I definitely would have been an easy target for abduction or something worse. I'll never forget the way that they looked at me. It was honestly as if it was a predator was eyeing off its prey. When my dad first told me this story as a kid, it gave me chills. Before going into the details, I'll give some context to set the setting and background of the incident. Bear with me too, it will all add up to the scary element of the story. So back in 1985, my 19 year old dad was serving in the Greek Army Special Forces in the Paratrooper Division. Kind of irrelevant, but I'm a proud son, so I thought that I'd mention it. Army service in Greece is mandatory for every male that has reached their 18th birthday, and so everyone has to go. Military camps where each company is stationed at are mostly positioned in the countryside and usually there isn't much going on near and around the camp, but they are fairly secluded. Closest town to my pop's camp was like three kilometers away. So one night, while serving, it was my dad's turn to go on guard duty in the camp that he was posted in. Every night, five to six soldiers were selected for guard duty and they slept in the same barracks. Half hour before it was time for the previous guards to be relieved, another soldier would come into the room, wake up the new batch so that they would get ready and go to their positions. Each shift was two hours. The 12 to 6 a.m. shifts were the worst according to my pops. It gets extremely cold in the winter and you're half asleep standing beside your booth, freezing your butt off while keeping watch. Only way to be vigilant and keep warm is if you take a few steps up and down constantly. So, it was 2am and my dad was standing next to his booth with his M1 Grand Rifle. The Greek army used World War II weapons in the 80s. Absolute silence at this point. He could only hear the wind. He mentioned that the moon was helpful with visibility, but there's only so much you can make out at night, even with the moon, apart from dark shadows, especially at longer distances. There were some tree lines far away, but there wasn't much vegetation around the camp at all. It was more like a clearing, I guess. Everything is going well, like every other night. 
until a tall dark mass appears from the path coming out of the tree line and it's headed right towards my father's booth. My dad's heart starts pumping when he spots it and he's pretty scared at this point. The mass moves slow but steady and is closing the distance but almost like floating with big slow steps. My dad does what he is instructed to do and what every guard does in a situation like this. He raises his rifle, aims and screams halt, identify yourself. There's no reply. The shadow continues to approach. Second time, halt, identify yourself, but nothing. He told me at this point that he is certain that he's seeing a ghost in real life. He says that he thought to himself, let's see if a ghost can die. Before he engages though, he has to scream a code word that raises the alarm. The way that works is the next guard on the next booth that is hundreds of meters away will hear the scream, then scream himself, and with a chain reaction like that, the alarm goes off from booth to booth and reaches patrol. The patrol is an officer with five soldiers that make rounds between booths every night and make sure everything is okay with the guards. If you're caught sleeping or away from your post by these guys, well, rest in peace. But they're also the ones to investigate an alarm. The only problem is that the patrol might take a while to get to the booth that raised the alarm, as they don't know which one it is and they might be far away from the right one. Basically, they just run double time through every booth until they locate the original source of the alarm. So my dad hears the other guys screaming and he knows the alarm is raised. He knows that the patrol is going to be there in a few minutes. He also knows that the penalty for falsely raising the alarm is prison. Prison means a soldier gets X amount of days added to their service. The service back then was two years plus prison days that have been added to a soldier along with some penalties. But they don't actually lock you up in a cell or anything unless you commit an actual crime obviously. Then the military police gets involved. But he doesn't have minutes. The eerie figure is 50 meters away and closing in now. He's getting ready to fire. Then he hears, relax, my dad's last name, it's me. Another soldier, covered in a black blanket that my dad knew, was trying to sneak back into the camp at night after having fun in the nearest town without permission. He was holding a bottle of liquor too and was fairly drunk. My dad let him through, but he knew that he was about to get serious amounts of prison time for falsely raising the alarm once the patrol figured out that it was his booth that the alarm was raised from. The patrol gets there. My dad doesn't snitch on the drunk guy. The officer tells him that they'll see each other the next morning. The next day in line, where the penalties are being announced by the officers, my dad is waiting to hear his name called. But in the end, they never mentioned him. Even though an alarm is raised, it's extremely rare to happen that nobody tells him anything. Anyway, it turns out in the end that the patrol officer and the ghost were buddies. The guy sneaking in told the lieutenant what happened and not to mention my dad. The officer apparently pulled some strings and the whole incident was like it never actually happened. But it's scary to think that that guy who was sneaking back like that, one wrong move and he would have been dead and I really don't know what would have happened to my dad. This is my first time speaking about this and I'm curious to learn more about my situation. So, when I was 13, I was in a really dark place cutting, messing with Satanism, etc. I was always suspicious of the information out there on spirituality though, so I never held what I knew to much truth. My family has always had their experiences and abilities. My mum was an empath and could dream about events that would eventually happen. My brother who could see and dream about spirits in the house. I never knew what my thing was, but... My mum always warned me about messing with anything evil since I'm an energetic beacon apparently. I didn't listen in the end and I got a Ouija board for Christmas. I was in terrible depression and was all around the perfect feeding ground for something evil. 
For a week, nothing was happening though. I was playing alone and kept rushing the process and doing literally everything wrong. Eventually, I tried to actually follow the directions though and call out. I waited for a second after doing this and the room got absolutely freezing. It sounded like I put AirPods in as well and put the noise cancelling option on and heard loud ringing. Suddenly, the planchette moved to yes. It was way more than what I was prepared for, so I freaked out and closed the session without anything but an uh, okay goodbye. And that seemed to tick off whatever was there. It got so cold and the hair on my body immediately stood up. I look to my mirror across the room and I see this goat-legged figure with wings and squinted eyes lurching towards me open-armed. I immediately ran out and tried to tell my father and stepmom what happened. They just all laughed and said that I was being ridiculous. The next few days, I, I really couldn't sleep either. I couldn't eat. I was constantly crying and felt sick to my stomach. My father said that he didn't believe in that type of stuff, but he still made me take the board home to my mother with me, and that was that. My mum, though, immediately felt that something was off. I was too afraid to tell her the truth, so I kept it a secret. That entire week, we all had this strange dream about a woman with an unhinged jaw screaming over us with no sound coming out, waking up at the same time at night, and dogs running from me or hiding under furniture when I entered the room. My mum threw so many things out of the house that had any sort of energy tied to it to get rid of it. After a fight about why I hadn't eaten in a week, I fessed up and brought the board to them and explained everything. My mum wasn't mad, more relieved since she knew how to fix it. From there, she set up a safe environment to exercise me, poured salt around me in the board, candles, holy water, the whole thing. Everyone left the house except for me and my stepdad. We both held our hands on the planchette and the spirit was already going crazy, trying to move off the board, counting backwards, going to letters, all of it. He kept saying to leave our house and to leave me alone. Eventually, it stopped after doing this for five or so minutes. In the silence, waiting for a sign, my stomach rumbled so loud. I suddenly felt a type of hunger that I'd never felt before and devoured an entire large stuffed crust pizza. My stomach looked disgustingly bloated for my 13-year-old body because I hadn't eaten in almost two weeks at this point. But since then, I've never felt the same. My mother said that the entire week she couldn't feel my presence like I was muted. And I know it sounds weird, but I've always wondered if it sort of ate a part of me or something, or if it still follows me around even. Since that incident, I threw out all of my creepy things or anything that reminded me of that incident, I converted to Wicca and have been consistently practicing purification rituals and clean energy practice. Still though, when I'm really depressed, I always see a shadow figure in the corner of my eye or in the corner of a dark room. It could be my paranoia, I admit that, but still, a part of me thinks differently. But what do you guys think? Have you had any similar instances or insight to something like this? If you have, then I would love to know. So back in 2013 to 2014, I basically lived by myself. I was 14 at the time, but both parents were alcoholics. Dad was on the other side of town with a one-bed apartment, and Mum was always with her boyfriend. That being said, most of the time I'd have a friend come to sleep over with me, since I don't really do well being alone at night. It just always made me feel uneasy, I guess. This particular house that we had moved into, we'd been living there for about four months. My brother and mum went together on the lease, but he ended up missing his fiancée and ultimately decided to just help mum pay half the rent and come and go as he needed to. 
He was a night shift nurse and his schedule was all over the place. Anyway, my friend, her name was Mandy, lived in the neighborhood which made it easier for her to come and stay. We'd take turns at each other's houses and one night, Mandy and I, we were doing some hood rat stuff. We were at our neighborhood park hanging out with my boyfriend at the time, Alan, and some dude that she wanted to hook up with, which she did in the park bathroom on the floor while I awkwardly sat on the bleachers like three feet away from Alan because we had only been dating for like two months. After she did her deed, we walked back to my house though. Probably about 30 to 45 minute walk or so, but we didn't get there until about 3 a.m., my brother was working that night, so we decided that we'd take over his bed instead of my terrible futon that would flip if more than one person was on it. Mandy and I were laying there, and I heard her whisper something. I looked over at her and said, What? And her eyes were wide. She then said, I didn't say anything. You just whispered in my ear, and you're freaking me out. I started laughing because, for some reason, that's my reaction to situations that scare me, I guess. Mandy, I swear to you that I didn't whisper in your ear. You're just trying to freak me out, dude. It's not funny. She jumped up and grabbed her charger and her phone and started saying that she was really scared by that and asked if we could switch rooms. So we get our stuff and we go out to my mum's room across the hall. She plugs her phone in and starts calling her mutual friend MJ. She starts telling MJ how freaked out she was by what happened. And this next part is what made me absolutely terrified. As she's explaining the story to MJ, we suddenly hear footsteps that sounded like heavy work boots. And we had hardwood floors in that house, so you could definitely hear it more pronounced. The footsteps started at the far end of the hallway and made their way to my mum's door. Mandy and I were so scared that we couldn't even talk. We just looked at each other and then looked at my mum's door waiting for someone to start banging on it or open it or whatever. I tried to rationalize and tell myself that it was my brother because he always wore boots even if he wasn't working. But I peeked out the blind since my mum's window was right in front of the driveway and his car wasn't out there. We hear two more steps kind of like it went to my brother's room. I told Mandy that we probably needed to call 911 since somebody was in the house, but then it clicked. I had triple checked the back door and the front door to make sure that they were locked, all the windows and the screen door as well. The screen door was metal and it had a sort of loose panel on the bottom, so it was pretty loud when anyone opened it. And it clicked that I didn't hear the screen door the squeaky front door or the back door. After about 10 to 15 minutes, we got the courage to go out and look. And when we did, nothing was out of the ordinary and every door and window was definitely locked. I cannot describe the fear that I felt that night though, not knowing if somebody was about to burst your door open and murder you and your friend. Ever since that night, Mandy refused to come back as well. And honestly, I really can't say that I blame her. I have other stories from this same house, but this one's already pretty long, so it'll have to do, and I'll tell you guys some more another time. But thanks for listening. I'm at a relatively small college campus in the Midwest. It's within a larger city and about four blocks total. One evening, while my roommate was at home, I chose to go on a walk. It was a Saturday night, about 6pm, around the beginning of February. If you're not familiar with the Midwest winters, that means it was pretty much pitch black out. And I enjoy wandering around the various buildings on campus, even the ones that I really have no business being in, because after all, it's my tuition that helps fund them. Now, on a Saturday night, I was expecting most buildings on campus to be locked, so when I tugged on the music building's door handles, imagine my surprise when it easily swung open. The hallway lights were on, but I didn't see anyone. I chose to go up the first set of stairs that I found, all the way to the fourth floor, which was also the top floor. 
the stairwell itself. It gave me the creeps, but I took pictures of it because it reminded me of those eerie liminal space photographs that tend to freak people out. When I got to the top floor, it was dead silent. I felt like someone would pop out of nowhere and yell at me for being in there, but I crept down the hall listening for footsteps. The hallways in particular wasn't one that branched out. It had two stairways at the end of it and a single elevator. I had this gut feeling too that it wasn't safe and had my pepper spray in my hand in case I did run into anything sketchy. Call me paranoid, but it was terrifying. When I got about halfway down the hall, I heard an instrument start playing. Now, I can't even remember what it was. Maybe a brass instrument? Maybe the piano? Either way, I knew instantly that I wasn't alone, and I wanted to leave quickly. The stairs left me uneasy, looking at the second set that I hadn't gone up sent alarm bells ringing in my mind. It was even more liminal-like, but something stopped me from going down those stairs, so I waited for the elevator. It took probably a good 45 seconds to get to me, and when it did, it had a horror movie-like chime to it. It was slightly bigger than average too. It shook the entire way down, that awful chime ringing out as I passed each floor. When it finally reached the first floor and the doors opened, I instantly saw a middle-aged man leaning against the opposite wall staring right into the open doors, right at me. He was tall, not anything special, but his eyes flicked to my hand, still gripping my pink pepper spray. Looking back, I'm glad that I had it at the ready. I stepped out of the elevator and kind of nodded at him before turning to walk to the doorway that I had entered from, the one farthest from the elevator. It's important to mention too that there was also another entrance right next to the elevator. That one led to a much darker, less walked area of campus. I make my way down this hallway, glancing back at the man every few seconds. He's just staring after me, not moving. He doesn't get on the elevator either, but once he notices me looking at him, he slowly turns and starts towards the doors close to him, the ones that I'm getting farther and farther away from. I continue walking and continue looking back at him. We reach our respective doors about the same time, which is odd, considering how close he was to his in comparison to me with mine. Regardless, as soon as I put my hand on the door, I look back once more. The man has now turned towards me and has begun to jog towards me, sort of in the way runners do, not particularly fast but enough that it would be easy for them to gain speed. Instincts kicked in at this point, alarms are blaring in my head that I need to get to the library where it is safe and populated right now. I push through the two sets of doors and begin sprinting. I don't look behind me anymore. There's a, a set of small steps before the library and I fall up those. One of my gloves falls to the bottom of the steps and I rush down to grab it before running once more. Eventually I end up safe in the library and try to calm my racing heart. I also realize that I had lost a single glove at some point. I get my mum on the phone and talk really loudly with her and I make my way back to the music building to find it dropped about 60 feet from the entrance. I grab it before booking it back to my room. Now obviously, I don't know what the man's intentions were. Perhaps he was only trying to scare me because he knew that I would be freaked out or something else, but maybe, just maybe, his intentions were dark. I mean, chasing someone while they're alone in a really dark and sketchy building, it doesn't seem right. Regardless, it was one of the most terrifying things that has ever happened to me and after that, I quit going into dark buildings at night from that point on. Shadow, my 115 pound German Shepherd Black Lab mix, started to signal that she had to use the bathroom at about 1 to 1.15 in the morning. Annoyed because I was almost asleep, I got up, put a hoodie on and I took her out with nothing but my phone for a flashlight. She started to do the usual sniff for 15 minutes just to go to the regular spot routine. I had my flashlight on her because she's sort of camouflaged by the night and I would like to know where she's at so that she doesn't run off. 
and just as she's starting to use the bathroom, I turn away and I notice someone. They're standing at the very edge of my yard. Looking back at my dog, I noticed that she wasn't paying attention to the person yet, so I called her to me and attached her leash. The person just stood there and watched me. I called out to them and said, you need to leave my yard, to which I got silence back. I cleared my throat, repeated myself, eventually attempting a third time just to change it to, don't make me tell you again, you're going to have to leave my yard. Just as my partner was coming outside to see what the commotion was, they took a few steps forward, clearly intending to continue towards me, caught a glimpse of my partner, backpedaled, turned around and left. As confused as he was, I was in complete shock. We've had to run this one person off of our property because they would bring their dog over to use the bathroom in our yard, but it definitely wasn't them. I've seen their face and it wasn't them. They haven't been back, but right before that, we did find footprints near our shed and windows of our home even. It was genuinely unnerving, so we contacted the police and they didn't really do anything other than take a statement. I've been told that it will go nowhere until physical harm or a break-in happens. So this is a story from just before I moved house. I felt like I was going crazy in this house too. I also want to add on too that we were the end house and the house next door to us was completely abandoned. So this all starts when I had taken a nap in the middle of the day. I was in a dream and everything was normal. I was sat on the sofa with my friend and all of a sudden because of consciousness I think, I was in the dream but I said nothing. There was a, a weird tension in the air too and I looked at the box of the tissues that were next to me and I woke up and the tissues went flying up through the ceiling. I then said, if there's somebody here, then do that again. It did, but I caught it that time. I then turned to my right, and there was a massive goat inches from my face. For some reason, I knew that it had human teeth, and in my head I thought, if you are what I think you are, talk. It went to talk, and I stopped it. It turned its head a little, like it was annoyed, and then let out this demonic scream is all I can say it was. It immediately woke me up though, realizing that I must have still been asleep. And the weirdest thing is that I could still hear it for a few seconds as I was forced wide awake. I didn't tell anyone as my partner at the time was scared of this stuff, but the mood in the house had changed after that. I would joke that there's a ghosty in the house and he would say it won't do anything. A few days later, I was at the hospital with my mum. I get messages freaking out to come back. When I get back, he was sat outside with the dog terrified. He explained that he was stood in the kitchen making a drink when he heard my voice say, are you okay? So he turned around thinking that I was back but nobody was there. He turned back to make the drink and he felt a hot pain down his back. I looked and there were three deep red lines down the middle of his back. He has very short nails and there's no way that he could have done this to himself. The scratches were also there for three days and after that he left. A week later too, my mum came to tell me that the night before, she had heard me at the bottom of the stairs shout mum. It was three in the morning and I was fast asleep upstairs like any normal human being would. But she said that it sounded like my voice but for some reason that she knew that it just couldn't have been me. A few weeks had gone by and I was in the hallway bringing in shopping when it felt like someone had grabbed my butt. I walked into my mum and said something just grabbed my butt. We joked that it was the ghost and she said, you dirty pervert. I went back to the bottom of the stairs and that was when I heard that same demonic scream again and this time my mum heard it too. We ran out and I ran out of the hallway. My heart was racing and I was frightened. I then hear what sound like footsteps upstairs walking away from us. 
since moving out of that house, I haven't had any activity to that extreme. I believe that it must have followed me from the old house and the abandoned church that we lived near, but who knows. All I know is that these days, whatever it was, I'm certainly glad to be rid of it. A few years ago, I was hiking the southern portion of the Pacific Crest Trail in Washington State, USA. It was late June, so warm enough that water sources were valuable. I made camp toward the end of the day in a mildly used site. It was a few feet off the trail, but not deep in the woods by any means. A babbling brook was about 50 feet away from me, and as I was heating water on my tiny stove for dinner, an older, 60-ish man walked down the trail. He saw me and hollered to ask if I had any water. I noticed that he was wearing regular clothes, jeans, sneakers, and a casual white button-down shirt. No pack, which was all very odd. I was far enough down the trail, maybe 10 miles from any road, that a day hiker would have been extremely rare at that point. In any case, I welcomed him into my camp and gave him some water from a jug. He drank it, thanked me, and then walked on. I thought that it was odd, and so it stuck in my mind. And the following week, I came off the trail to a nearby town and learned of a massive manhunt for a guy in his 60s wearing jeans, sneakers, and a casual white button-down shirt. He had abandoned his car near the PCT and was on the run from the feds for money laundering and other crimes, apparently. I never did learn if they found him, but I often wonder how far he got with no gear, no food, and no water. This was a while back. I live in a small town in Texas and there isn't that many shops or anything popular around here. In fact, really the only thing fun to do is the fair or the carnival that we have here every now and then. We also only have around one to three malls. And besides that, our town is really small and really doesn't have anything important about it. But I was staying a few nights at my cousin's and we usually pull a few all-nighters. We stay up pretty late, having energy drinks, but we didn't have any drinks or food or snacks with us that night, which is what we used to stay up all night. So we snuck out through his window. First, we made sure that the coast was clear, obviously, because his dad had a camera doorbell, and it definitely messed up the plan once or twice before, but we snuck through it. We go to this 24-hour gas station that takes 20 minutes just to walk to, but if you ran, you could probably get there in like 10 to 14. So we run over there. There are a few shops in the path over there, but something weird was going on that night. There were no stars. The only light was the street lights. There were no cars around. No sound, in fact. When we talked, it sounded like whisper, but we went behind this one thrift shop, but we started to hear... I don't know, something in the distance. As we got closer, we could make out that it was screaming up ahead of us. We check it out and we see four men in full black suits. You can't see their face or shoes or anything. They saw us though and we saw them grabbing someone. We didn't know if it was a woman or a guy, but they take out something and they started waving it at us. We're basically halfway away from them. Then one of them starts chasing after us and my cousin started running to the gas station because it was closer than home. I screamed at him though that we needed to get somewhere else. We ran and it felt like adrenaline was helping us. I was running faster than I ever had. We made it about nine minutes and we split up to two different alleyways. I was glad to see that he was okay and he told me the guy was chasing him but he gave up on him when he told an adult what had happened. She didn't believe us but... She still ended up calling the police and told them what happened. They searched the area and found nothing. They said that they would wait until the nearest store opens so that they could check the cameras. So we left taking a different route home and we just slept it off. We're still traumatized to this day about what that was. And we never found any answers to this day. This story was told to me by my uncle and he swears that it really happened. 
He was the only one in the family that this happened to, though, so nobody else could really back up his story. I don't know if I believe him myself, but here's apparently what happened. In 1979, there was a 12-year-old long civil war in El Salvador. My uncle was in the military. He was sent to the woods, the jungle, with like six other guys to go look for militia groups that we supposedly had camping out there. After walking in the woods or jungle for hours, they suddenly felt the ground shake as if something big was coming towards them. He described it sort of like Jurassic Park when the T-Rex was coming towards them and the water rippled and everything. He said that they thought that it was the enemy going to do something, so they hid. And he said that he was shocked when apparently they saw a giant. He said that it was walking in the distance. I asked if it was just, I don't know, like maybe a really, really big person like Bigfoot. And he said no, no way. It was more of a Jack and the Beanstalk kind of giant. He said that there were trees blocking the view somewhat, but that he could make out that it was like a really big human. He said that it was as tall as the tallest tree there. He said that he tried to get a good look at it, but he was terrified and didn't want to get out of his hiding spot when he realized what it was. He said the giant basically just walked past them. He said that they were all terrified and they waited there for a while as they were too scared to bump into another one. Two of the guys apparently suggested trying to kill it to get rich, but the guy in charge told them to stand down. My uncle said everyone thought that they were idiots for suggesting such a thing. He said that they walked back to base as quickly and quietly as possible. They told everyone when they got back, but nobody believed them. They were friends with the pilots though and the pilots called bull on their story because they fly over the jungle all the time and would have seen such a creature, especially if it was a, as tall as a tree as they claimed. He said that all of the guys described what they saw though. One guy claimed that it appeared to be bald. Another guy said that he thinks that it had some sort of loincloth like Tarzan or something. My uncle emphasized though that he didn't really get a good look and that all he knows is that the ground was shaking as if something really big was coming towards them. He said what appeared as a, a giant human was walking in the distance. He got down and hid and waited until it was gone. I began to ask him though things like, if it was real, don't you think that they would have found a body or some bones or something that big? Especially since El Salvador is so tiny in relation to other parts of the world. He responded along the lines of, I don't know about any of that stuff, I just know what I saw that day. And to be honest, I just don't know how I feel about this one personally. This one seems a little out there, I know. My mum said maybe that it was some sort of spirit that just made itself appear as a giant to scare them or whatever, and during the Civil War times, my mum claims that there was a lot of paranormal things going on because of all the deaths that were happening. A lot of innocent people were being killed. My grandma would say that if you looked out the window of the house, you would see the dead bodies on the street, in fact. That wouldn't explain the ground shaking, though. But has anyone ever encountered a story of a, a Jack in the Beanstalk kind of giant like this? I know it sounds a bit ridiculous, but this one scared me as a kid because it's just so unbelievable that if you did actually see it, then that really is crazy. When my husband and I first got married, we moved into an old house that we had inherited. The home was originally built in the early 1920s and definitely had visible age and history. Granted, my husband had been working on remodeling this house and made a decent amount of progress by the time that we moved in. The renovation needs were not what plagued me the most about this house though. I just never really liked the feeling of the house, the feeling that it gave me. but. I chalked it up to me knowing how old the house was and knowing a couple of members of my husband's family had passed in the house too. I'll skip all the cliche experiences like feelings of being watched, feeling not alone when you're alone and such, and get into one experience that even had my husband baffled. So he and I had settled into bed, said our goodnights and were all well on our way to falling asleep when we heard movement upstairs. At first, I didn't move or say anything. I honestly thought that I'd imagined it. 
until the sound of footsteps above us got louder. My husband sat straight up saying, you hear that too, right? I was pretty much shaking and mumbled of course, as it sounded like the footsteps were running across the upper floor. My husband hopped out of bed, ran out the door, then up the stairs. A few minutes later, my husband came back down the stairs into our bedroom and shut the door. At first, he didn't answer when I asked what that was. After prying at him again, he simply said, I'm sure it's just my great-grandmother checking in on us. She was one of the family members who had passed away in the house, but I was not convinced. This didn't feel like a friendly family ghost just visiting. It felt plain malicious to me. After that night, I started often hearing the sounds of movement upstairs when nobody was up there. Then the distinctive squeaking noise or stairs made when someone was walking on them started happening when I was alone downstairs. I can still feel the chills all over me when I would hear this right behind me while sitting on the couch in the downstairs living room. My friend had the bright idea to buy me a Ouija board to use in the house. After telling her of some of what I was experiencing, she was trying to see if anything would make contact. I flat out refused, but did keep the board upon her insisting that I may at some point want to try it. I took the board, still in its box, and placed it on a shelf at the top of a small linen closet that we had. I shut the closet door with every intention of forgetting that the board was even in there, However, after this, that closet door just never stayed shut. I would find it half opened almost every time that I walked by it. I started thinking that I wasn't actually shutting it completely and made it a point to make sure that I heard the door latch and would even pull on the doorknob to make sure that it was not open. Yet, sometime later, I'd go to get a towel or something like that and always find it half open. All while it would just be me in this house. I'll finish this up too with one of the most terrifying experiences that I had just before we finally moved out. So my husband was working a double shift at his job and it was just dark by the time that I made it back home that evening. After getting home, I went to straighten up the house and as I was picking things up, I reached down and nearly grabbed a, a massive black spider I recoiled in horror before realizing that it was the fake plastic spider my nephew had been playing with earlier in the day. I was half relieved and sort of half annoyed, as I was always on edge any time that I was alone in this house, and grabbed the creepy toy and flung it hard up the stairs. Now, there was a bedroom up there where I kept toys for my nephew when he visited. I planned to pick it up and pack it away in his toy box when I went up there to straighten the room up later. Side note, my nephew was terrified to sleep up there and would often not play up there alone because of what he called spookies. Anyway, as I turned away from the steps to go back to cleaning the downstairs, I heard a sort of whooshing through the air sound and then something slam against the wall at the bottom of the steps. I jumped to see what in the world that was and felt my blood run ice cold because there... That stupid toy spider laid on the floor at the bottom of the steps, as if someone or something had thrown it back down the stairs hard. I left that house that night. I left with my keys and phone and called my husband to tell him that I was going to my parents' house until he got home. As previously mentioned, we moved shortly after this experience and I was never alone in that house after dark ever again. That house sat vacant since we left too, still debating on selling or renting it out. My husband still insists that it was just his prankster grandmother, but I still refer to it as the upstairs boogeyman. We are 32-year-old female, 32-year-old male, 10-year-old female, and 10-year-old male. Bought our new house this past July from a retired minister and his wife. As soon as we started moving in, we noticed a weird bumping and thumping coming from the master bedroom closet shortly after sunset every evening. At this time, we were all sleeping on a mattress in the living room waiting for our furniture to be moved. We just sold our respective houses and were combining households. We had a plumber come and check things out to make sure that it wasn't just pipes thumping, and it wasn't. 
We moved our furniture in over the next few weeks and life continues as normal. We still heard the thumps from upstairs, sounded like an animal jumping down off of something up high, and noticed some other odd things happening as well. Like the light in our entryway in our garage would randomly be turned on some days when we got home. And so we decided to install cameras in the front of the entries to see if maybe someone had our access code or something, coded entry no key, to the front door and was stopping by for whatever reason. We also had a friend who was an electrician checking out our wiring to make sure that everything looked okay, no electrical issues at all, and also no visitors in the end. Now one night, my partner was away at work on night shift and I was sitting on the couch watching TV while my son slept upstairs. Stepdaughter was at her mum's for the evening and I kept seeing little flashes coming from in front of the oven. I thought that maybe there was a car passing by on the main road so I checked the doorbell camera and nothing had driven by. Then I decided that maybe the oven light was flickering on or something so I watched the oven for a minute to see if it would come on. And instead... I saw what looked almost like blue linen move from one side of the doorway to the other. And then the noises started. First, I heard the thumping coming from upstairs in the master bedroom, then the dining room, the kitchen, the entryway, and back up the stairs. I texted my partner and said something is going on in this house and either I'm losing my mind or some weird spirit stuff is going on, but I feel like I'm under attack and asked him to come home immediately. In the meantime, I went upstairs to my bedroom with both my cats and waited. The house started to hum in a way that made the hair on the back of my neck stand up. It was almost like static electricity had filled the air or something. That was when I heard a snap and for a split second, I saw my grandmother, who had passed a few years back, standing at the foot of my bed, wearing a blue linen top and pants. This detail is important too, but I didn't know it at the time. And I was terrified, so I called out enough and it was gone. The air calmed down, the anxiety left, the house was quiet. I immediately messaged my cousin and said, Dude, I think I just saw Nanny in the house and I need you to tell me that I'm not nuts. And described what I'd seen to which she sent me a photo of her and said, This outfit? And told me that it was the outfit that my grandmother had been buried in apparently. I didn't attend the visitation prior to the funeral because I lived hours away at the time and I had just moved back to my hometown in July so I didn't know this. My partner came home at around 11.30pm and laughed at me because I'd sweat my entire body outline into our sheets. I told him what happened and we changed the sheets and sat up for a while being reasonably freaked out and then we just went to bed. The next morning, I thought that I'd gone bonkers, so I messaged a medium my friend recommended, and we met a couple of weeks later, and she told me that she felt my grandmother was coming around to try and warn me about something and to stay alert. That was in December, and two months later, the next time that my son and I were the only ones alone in the house, we were woken up shortly after midnight to the neighbor kicking our front door in and screaming for us to get out because our house was burning down with us inside of it. We got out and everything was okay in the end, but the fire marshals inspected after the fire was out and told us that there was apparently an issue with the chimney and evidence that every time that we'd started a fire in our wood stove, when it started getting cold around November, there was more than likely a small fire smoldering in our walls drying out the wood until eventually it dried out enough to catch fire inside the wall and just burn all the way through. No one will ever convince me that she wasn't there trying to warn us that night. Everyone survived, the house burned to the ground, and it was honestly the most terrifying set of experiences that I've ever had. This happened a few weeks ago and I haven't been able to sleep well since. It just plays over in my mind again and again. Nothing like this has ever happened to me before and hopefully it won't happen again. So, a bit of backstory first. I suffer from night terrors. I've done so for about six years since my youngest was born. I think it's night terrors anyway. 
It's like my eyes are open and I'm aware of my surroundings but see things that aren't there. Or at least that's what I've always thought. Someone has said that this might be sleep paralysis but I've never been aware that I can't move, if that makes sense. I thought that you couldn't move with sleep paralysis anyway but maybe one of you will know but I don't know what causes it and don't really know how to control it but I have somewhat gotten used to it I guess. It happens a few times per week. I should probably speak to a sleep specialist about it I know but normally it's a tall man standing behind my door. He doesn't do anything just sort of stands silently and watches. When I come around properly, it's my dressing gowns or coats hanging on the back of the door, causing the shape of a tall man. Every time my heart beats out of my chest for a few seconds, but mostly I can just roll over and go back to sleep, convincing myself that I was just being deceived by something in my room. Anyway, this night, though, I was asleep or awake. I don't know how to describe this state, but my bedroom door swung open and a child walked into my room. Not unusual as well as I have to, an eight-year-old female and a six-year-old male. It was dark being the middle of the night, so I just saw the little figure come in. I watched the child walk around my bed, I sleep on the side closest to the door, to the foot of the opposite side of my king-size bed, like they were going to climb in on the other side, and I said, hey, are you okay? They didn't reply, and without me feeling them climbing on the bed, a hand grabbed my foot, maybe five feet away from where they were previously standing. I have terribly ticklish feet and I accidentally kicked out when they did it. And I kicked the child that I didn't feel climbing into my bed. My heart sank and I rolled away to turn on my lamp saying, Oh, sorry, sorry. But when I turned back there, there was no child. I jumped out of bed thinking that I'd knocked them off the bed or something and just didn't hear it. I looked around but there was no one. I checked the kids rooms and sure enough they are both safe and sound in their beds fast asleep. I know that it sounds mad but I'm physically shaking sharing this. I to this day do not know what happened and have thought about it endlessly every night when I go to bed. I don't know if I was just imagining things, but man, it just felt so real. This happened way back in 2017. I, a female and 16, was in the fifth grade at the time. Me and my sister, female and 19, were sharing a room and we were casually just talking. She was in middle school and I was in elementary. Keep in mind too that I live in a two-story house and the rail that goes along the stairs is like a metal gate so you're able to see downstairs. Now, at night you really can't see anything when looking down the stairs. It's literally just pitch black so all you can really do is hear movement. That night, me and my sister were just hanging out and all of a sudden we hear a, a deep raspy voice that's coming from the dark and it said my sister's name and we completely froze. Then a couple of seconds later, it said my sister's name again, but with more force in its voice. And that was when me and her slammed and locked the door. My stomach turned so much and I had such a horrible feeling that I honestly felt that we were about to die. I always tell people that it sounded like a, a clown that lost its voice almost. It was really raspy and scary and it just didn't sound normal at all. Now, the only people home were my aunt and my cousin, but they were asleep and my mum's boyfriend had just left to work on a car, so me and my sister were the only ones awake. We knew that somebody was inside, but we had no idea what to do at this point. And then it just got really, really silent. We could hear the footsteps coming up the stairs too. We started freaking out though, obviously, especially since we didn't have anything to protect ourselves with if something happened. I was on the phone with the 911 dispatcher though while my sister was on the phone with my mum and my mum made me hang up on the dispatcher for whatever reason. Anyway, my mum's boyfriend gets here and not a single thing was moved. Everything was locked and no one was in the house. To this day though, I truly believe that somebody was with us that night. I think about it every day and 
I truly thought that I was about to die that night from an intruder. I do believe that this house has a couple of, I don't know, like spirits roaming around, but I haven't had anything else like that happen ever again since then. It was a strange night, and I think about it all the time. This happened to me when I was in my teens, almost 20s. I am female and I would walk regularly to the local park, lake sort of fields alone. This is before cell phones and the internet as well. One afternoon I headed through the fields like I always did and was on my way to the lake when I felt something really weird in my gut, telling me not to go. I felt creeped out enough and decided to change paths, head to the baseball or soccer field instead. The whole walk there, I don't know, I just felt kind of tense, but I just figured that I was shaken up by something at the lake. I got to the soccer field though and I sat on a swing set. I could easily see a fair distance around me and felt pretty safe. I lost track of time I guess and suddenly it started to get dark. I was about 20 to 25 minutes from home and I decided to head back at this point. I got off the swing and immediately feel complete terror wash over me. I hear someone's voice, a man's voice. It said something, but I couldn't quite make out what it was. I freeze and listen, every hair on my body standing up, when suddenly I hear a, a click and a flash, a white flash of light. I immediately hear that disposable camera post picture ringing sound and the loud rapid clicking of the camera person rolling the film. I am in full panic at this point. I have three exit points. One leads backwards and towards the lake. The second exit is where the camera person is. And the only other option is the opening in the fence nearly a football field away. On the other side of the fence is a neighborhood, lights and people though. So I take off in a full sprint. I hear a rustling and thudding sound. And then another click, flash, ring and wind the film sound. Tears are streaming down my face and I tear through the grass. I draw my knife and I fly through the gate and down another pathway behind the houses on the right. I duck into a ditch in a backyard where I'm far off the path hidden but can see whoever comes into the cul-de-sac. I have pepper spray too and grip it in my right hand shaking. My heart is pounding as I stare at the opening and wait. I wait for what feels like an eternity but nobody ever comes through. I went to a friend's house who lived nearby that night and I stayed with her for the night and after that I never went to the lake or park or fields alone ever again. I don't know who or what was nearby but that night I genuinely felt like I was something's prey. It was the first weekend in May of 1997 when this happened. At the time, I was a sophomore at our local private two-year college. Instead of living in the dorms, I lived at home as our house was right next to the campus anyway, to the point where I was closer to a couple of my classes than the students who lived in the dorms even. But just to the south of our place was an overflow parking lot, which served both the church and the school. The school was about to embark on a remodel project where it had enough construction to warrant parking a tractor trailer in the overflow parking lot, basically perpendicular to our house. In any case, two of my best friends were heading home the next morning, one for Iowa and the other for Virginia, so we decided to spend the evening as best as we could by watching some movies. And remember you youngins, this was before streaming services were ever a thing. The college was a hotbed of activity as people were packing up to head home with the graduating sophomores getting ready for the ceremony in two days. As we were lounging in my living room, a couple of the girls that we knew, one of which I was interested in, suddenly rang the doorbell asking to come in to wash their hands as they had been on a walk and their hands smelled funny. The girl that I liked at the time, her name was Katie, stuck her hands in my face to which I recognized the distinct smell of shaving cream so I knew that something nefarious was afoot. We watched them leave via the dining room windows before I told the boys that they were up to something, so we left from the back door. Those two girls had tried to trash my friend's room with shaving cream and toothpaste apparently. 
and at that, it was game on. We ran into one of the boy's mod mates, an obnoxious guy who had no concept of boundaries. I had made a point of not ever letting this guy, his name was JB, know where I lived, as he was the type to just show up unannounced and not pick up on social cues when it was time to leave. The girls were hiding from our retribution and even JB pledged his loyalty to help us that day. I told him to keep an eye out, we'd be back, so we left him hanging in the common area under the girls' dorms. We slid back to my house, to which I told the boys to just be patient. The girls would be back. We set up watching to the south from the darkened dining room, soon rewarded by seeing Katie sneaking back towards the house. I told the boys the plan was to ambush her, so we crept out the back door. Katie had disappeared behind the tractor trailer as she was obscured from view, but to our dismay, there was a black clad figure laying on the ground just around the corner from the trailer where Katie was hiding. My boys were next to me as I was cussing in whispers because I was 30 yards away from whom I thought was JB. He was laying with his head away from us so he couldn't see us without turning his body as he stayed perfectly still. He might have been 10 feet away from the corner of the trailer where Katie was, and after a brief discussion, I said that it couldn't be helped, so we continued with our plan to ambush and scare Katie. The three of us quietly padded around the backside of this trailer to find Katie on her stomach, intently watching the house, trying to see movement. She was actually way closer to where JB was laying, completely oblivious to the fact that he was actually within 5 feet of her prone position. She never heard me as I crept up behind her, curled my hands into claws before grabbing her as I snarled. The fetal position instantly for her, which prompted howling laughter from my two friends and myself. She was petrified as we chortled and I caught my breath long enough to wonder where JB was as I thought that he would join us by now. Looking around the corner, there was no one on the ground, but you could tell that someone had been laying there the way that we saw them even in the darkness. One of the boys, TC, said the black clad figure jumped up and ran to the west apparently, which was odd I thought, but JB was also a really strange guy. Which was odd I thought, but JB was a really strange guy. In any case, after Katie apologized for what happened earlier, and I detailed what happened, our merry band made it back to campus to keep our eyes on her. We ran into JB to which I said, Dude, you didn't have to run off. You could have stayed. JB replied, uh, I don't even know where you live. And suddenly, the realization hit us like a ton of bricks. It wasn't JB laying on the ground, mere feet from Katie. And Katie went as white as a sheet. All of us were suddenly creeped out by some random guy laying on the ground, waiting for something. And it also turns out that during the summer, all around the college, there were cases of houses being walked through with very little being taken as if someone was casing houses, but no one was ever caught. For some context, I live in a two-story house by myself with my cat Noodle. When I first moved in about two months ago, the place didn't seem creepy or haunted in the slightest, which is surprising because I'm usually very scared of sleeping in a house alone. Starting about three weeks ago, there have been a couple of instances of what I can only describe as hearing my own voice mimicked back to me from another room or downstairs, most of which I brushed off as my imagination or, I don't know, like an echo or something because they were so quiet. I always say, hey buddy, to my cat in the morning, so, when I heard a very clear hey buddy from behind the closed door of another room, which was empty, I took it more seriously. That has happened a couple of times now from different areas of the house. The person who was staying at my house to take care of my cat while I'm away this week also just told me today that he's heard his own whistling mimicked back to him from downstairs in the morning too. He does a very specific whistle to call the cat, and upon hearing it, he grabbed his keys and left immediately. I've had plenty of paranormal experiences throughout my life, but I've never had to handle it all alone like this. This is making me scared to go back home and be alone at night. And 
apparently too, my kitchen cabinet opened on its own as well. Hopefully we can film it if it happens again, but another person was over with me to feed the cat this evening and they felt uncomfortable near the doorway to my room. And so, this is all just great for my stress levels. My brother is two years older and we've probably spent 10,000 hours and then some in the woods together. Whether it was building forts, BMX tracks, to LARPing and hunting, we've traveled across the US exploring caves, canyons, cliff diving, mountain biking, camping, hunting, whitetail mule, deer, wild boar, etc. since 2016 when we got the time off. I feel like adding this is important because there's genuinely nothing that I wouldn't do or fear when I have him by my side, but this time, this time was different, and we both felt it. Don't get me wrong, we've had our fair share of adventures and stories to tell of sorts, but this one has felt like a, a lingering stain on my memory. So we were both mid-20ish, and it was 2019, and this was probably my fifth time hunting the area, and the first time that I brought my brother along. It's a large forest area of public land that has a few county roads, which are basically two tracks that stretch miles throughout the area. We make the trip up in my truck with our tents, three in total. There's one for each of us and another to change in and keep our gear in and whatnot. Without making this long-winded, we set up camp a couple of miles from the truck, which we drove for quite a few miles through the trails, basically middle of nowhere. Nearest main road is probably 8 to 10 miles away. We arrived late in the night, set up camp, and quickly fell asleep after a long trip. We then spent the next day scouting, tracking, then made back to camp for the night. We cooked, then ate, had some beers, and just mucked around. The night was still early, but we had a long day and decided to head off for the night. Everything up until this point was pretty much normal as well. I was suddenly awoken though to something smacking my tent and hearing my brother's voice call my name. I knew something was off instantly. I called back to him and he immediately unzipped my tent and made his way inside. I could tell that he was disturbed when I went to ask him what was wrong and he immediately grabbed my shoulder and told me to shush. The sun wasn't up yet, so I think it must have been around 4.30 or 5 in the morning. We sat in my tent, and what we heard still confuses me to this day. I can only really explain it as, like, whale sounds. Different tones of extremely loud noise that I could feel throughout my body. It would come and go, but there would only be maybe a few seconds of silence in between the sounds. It would vary from high-pitched squeals and everything in between to very low sounds that had like literal ground-shaking reverb. I regrettably didn't think to grab my phone or record anything that was going on because what I was hearing just didn't seem real and in the moment I, I guess I was just awestruck. The sound went on until daylight started to break and I believe it was about an hour, but I'm not really sure. Neither ever spoke, and at the time it felt like I could feel the energy around me, almost like my body was covered in white noise, if that makes any sense. But it wasn't even minutes after the sound stopped. It started to rain, and one of the craziest thunderstorms I've ever been in while I was camping happened. The forecast didn't predict or account for any rain the days that we were going to be there prior to making the trip. All the stakes for the tent, our gear, was completely ripped out of the ground, and both of our tents had multiple stakes ripped out as well. Those things were drove into the ground with an axe, mind you, and would take some insane force to unearth even a single one. I mean, they were pretty large. My brother... He dismisses it and won't even talk about it, saying that it was just machinery being dragged, but at the time, we both shared the same feeling of fear and dread. It just seems odd that it was still the middle of the night and we were so far removed from any nearby communities or industry to hear and experience this occurrence. I have no idea what it was, but it will forever stay with me.
In the past week, I've had a few experiences that have really scared me. I'm still in school, so I'm not in the house for long weekdays, but when I have been, I've had some less than pleasant experiences. This all started Saturday or Sunday when me and my mum, dad and sister were all hanging out playing board games downstairs when we hear what seemed to be footsteps upstairs. Not hard to hear as our house is old and floorboards are really very creaky, but we were all downstairs, so who was up there? We all kind of stare at each other like, that's weird. We write it off as just one of our dogs and continue playing. That is, until we put away our dogs in the kennels downstairs and once again hear the footsteps. My dad goes upstairs reluctantly and checks to make sure that nobody is up there. He comes downstairs with a I told you so look on his face, but that all changes when we hear three doors slam as hard as they could be slammed in a row from upstairs. Now, my dad grabs a shotgun from the case and sets up the stairs. He clears the house, but again, nobody is found. A couple of days go by and I'm walking in the house after coming back from school and I hear three loud knocks on the window at the ground level, not too out of the ordinary, as I figured my dad was saying hi, so I wave behind me and continue inside and call for my dad. But when I find him, he was outside grilling, so there's no way that he could have made those knocks. When I ask him about it, he turns a bit pale and says that the same thing has been happening to him. I tried to write it off until my mum and sister walk in and ask what we were talking about. We tell them and they tell us that they've had the same experiences. Nevertheless, we were already freaked out, but just a few nights later, I'm laying in my room. My dad's working in his office, my mum's reading in their bedroom, and my sister is doing laundry when we all apparently at the same time hear scratches on our doors. We all know that we heard it at the same time too because we all opened our doors to see what it was, just to see each other peeking out from the rooms. And we all point fingers until we hear the door to outside open, slam, and open again. We check the door and sure enough, it was wide open as we all stood there in shock. But then we hear something shatter in the other room and my mum and my sister bolt out the door I try and follow but my dad holds me back and we check the other room to see a shattered mirror. I turn around to get the heck out of there and hear my dad say, what the heck is that? And he says supposedly he saw a, a tall shadowy figure in the corner of the room wave at him. Of course, we're all freaking out and we're planning to try and sell this place. The weird part about this, besides the paranormal factors of course, is that we've lived in this house for 10 years without anything happening to us. So, why now? At 19 years old, I worked at a local pizza parlor called Cairo's. I was the one up front at the register and serving drinks like beer or wine. After closing, two people were in the back cleaning and closing up and I was up front cleaning the lobby. I was sweeping the floors and I simply turned toward the register where an open area was behind a counter that led to the kitchen of the restaurant and I saw a, a translucent person standing there in jean shorts and a, a red shirt, standard uniform. He looked like a, a light-skinned black young man or even teenager with a bit of an afro. I thought to myself, weird, what the heck? Looked away toward the window, looked back, and when I did, there was nobody there. Strangely, I didn't feel any malevolence, but sort of a, a peaceful, confused, and sad feeling, I guess. He looked surprised to see me too. We locked eyes for a moment. I asked before we left if anybody had ever died while working there, and they seemed a bit surprised that I would ask, and they said yes, a young man named Andre. About 10 years later, I was chatting with and hanging out with one of my best friends, best friend. She started to talk about ghost stories and I offered mine. She paled when I finished and said, I knew him, we were close in high school. 
she knew that he worked at the place at the same time of his death and then it hit me and I realized that I knew him in high school too, through mutual friends. His death was apparently mysterious but it was ruled an accident. He played the choking game and died at a park tied to a tree or something and a jogger found him in the morning. I still don't know how to feel about it but after that uh, I never saw him again. So this happened close to 14 years ago now when I was pregnant with my first child. My husband and I, we had gone to a friend's house one night for a bonfire and hayride party. There were a lot of people there and we knew quite a few but some groups brought people that we didn't know. This was during a time when goth was big in some social circles. It was mostly people obsessed with bands like Insane Clown Posse and heavy metal screamo music I guess but there was another segment of this culture that was pretty heavily involved with the occult and Satan etc. Anyway that night there was a group of these types and the majority gave off good vibes. All except for one though. You see when I walked into the house he immediately focused on me. It was very unsettling. He would stare, but in a very, very intense way. I don't know if I'm explaining it right, but it was unnerving in any case. The hayride was taken off soon, so I told my husband that we should go on it. We had slipped out of the house, and I knew this guy was still in the house. I just wanted to get away from him at this point. We loaded up on the wagon and got situated, but seconds before we took off, the guy suddenly jumps up into the wagon and squeezes in a spot directly across from me. The entire ride he stared at me, eyes boring into my soul. And honestly, this might sound super odd, but I had this overwhelming sense that, for some reason, he wanted to kill my baby. I can't explain it, and it was weird, I know, but I just felt the overpowering sense of evil, I guess. And how can you share this with someone else without sounding like you've lost your mind, right? So, in the end, I didn't say anything to anyone. When we got back, I told my husband that I didn't feel well and we should head out. With my large belly and all, he didn't question it and we left. Fast forward a few years later, we visited a church of that same friend that held the party. And who should be there but that same guy? Except this time... He had toned down his looks quite a bit and his body language was way more relaxed. I immediately sensed that he was a different person than I encountered years ago. My husband struck up a conversation with this guy for a while but I decided to keep my distance. Afterwards my husband told me that this guy had completely changed his life. How he had once been deep into satanic stuff and also seen evil spirits. And then he shared the one thing that made the hair on the back of my neck stand straight up. Hey, do you remember seeing him at the bonfire years ago? You won't believe it, but he said that he was at his lowest point at that time. And he said that he constantly heard voices telling him to kill people. And it was all he could do to not listen to them. Anyway, an afterthought too here is that... The guy did pretty good for a while and lived in a family's home for a couple of years. They had a couple of boys and one daughter. And I come to find out that he had been doing some really evil stuff and ended up going to prison for a while. Last time I saw him was one year ago. I walked into a local hardware store and there he was greeting people. He was the store manager and he still makes my skin crawl. In my early 20s, I landed a receptionist job in a sales office at a manufacturing housing community. It was my first office job after working in daycare and the food and drink industry. I was really excited at the time and I greeted potential buyers, set up appointments and staged the spec homes with our stock of furniture and decorations. I worked with one other person in the office who was the salesman. When he was out of the office, I took potential buyers through our spec homes and gathered their information for follow-up. Now, I was working alone one day when a customer came into the office looking to potentially purchase his first home. I gathered some information from the young man and asked if he would like to look at some spec homes. 
As we walked down the sidewalk toward the row of spec homes, we chatted about the various floor plans and finishes available. I knew the product information and had no trouble confidently answering his questions. He was friendly and reminded me of a classmate from high school that had played offense on the football team. So I decided to show him the two home models that best fit his price range and desired floor plan. Since I shared most of the technical information during the first home tour, I gave him some space to freely look around the second home. He walked through the main living area and stopped in the doorway to one of the back bedrooms. He called out, hey, what is this back here? And pointed to the corner of the room that I couldn't see from where I was standing. Now, I knew these floor plans by heart, so I politely answered that it was a closet. In my mind, I was sarcastically thinking, really, you don't know what a closet is? He chuckled and asked again, No really, come here, what the heck is back here? I could tell by his tone that he was pressuring me to come and see for myself. He motioned for me to come closer and take a look. His tone was friendly, but his request just didn't make any sense, so I paused. And in that split second, something shifted. Maybe it was the energy in the air, the hairs on the back of my neck standing straight up, all the way his eyes changed before me. But I suddenly sensed the power dynamic had shifted. I didn't feel safe anymore. With all the lightheartedness I could muster at that time, I repeated, Oh, it's a closet. Um, excuse me for a moment. I need to check on something outside. I quickly made my exit back to the sidewalk outside the house. I had no concrete reason for why I felt the overwhelming need to leave the house immediately. I didn't understand why my body sensed danger like that. I just knew that I needed to act quickly. Over the next few days, the young man came back to the office to meet with the salesman. He filled out the various paperwork needed to purchase a home and live within the community. He dropped by several more times unannounced to check on his application status. If I wasn't there, he would ask the salesman when I worked next. My co-worker thought that I had a not-so-secret admirer but I just couldn't shake the overwhelming feeling that something wasn't right. So on the nights that I worked alone, I always locked the office door. A few days later, corporate sent back their analysis of the young man's application and completed background check. And surprise, surprise, he had been denied. The background check revealed multiple sexual assault convictions. And there it was, crystal clear, undeniable 2020 hindsight. The salesman called the customer right away to let him know that his application had been denied and that we would not be doing anything further for him. A few days later, the young man decided to come back to the office one more time. When my co-worker saw the young man's vehicle turning into our parking lot, he told me to go to the back room of the office where I would be out of sight. And just like the times before, the young man entered the office asking if I was working. This time though, he was met by a very angry six foot tall salesman that had nothing to lose. I had never heard my co-worker raise his voice before, but on that day, his voice shook the office walls. Needless to say, the young man never came by again and I wasn't scheduled to work alone nearly as often. As I remember this, this happened when I was about three or four. I know that I was pretty small though because the top of the mattress on my parents' bed was about eye level and that will be relevant in a second. So I slept in a little room that was attached to my parents' bedroom via a door and at some point one night I had a bad dream so I got up, opened the door into my parents' dark bedroom where they were laying sleeping, walked a few steps to their bed then asked to get into bed with them. They drowsily agreed, but directly across from me and across the bed was another door that led to the hallway, and right after my parents mumbled that I could climb into their bed with them, this door opened and a dark figure entered. I don't remember precise details on how it looked. The room was dark and so was the figure, about the size of an adult male I would guess, but but what I do remember is the feeling that came over the room when this thing entered sheer dread. It was as if the entire atmosphere shifted to something oppressively evil all at once. 
I was on one side of the bed and it was on the other. As soon as it entered, it began making its way around the foot of the bed towards me. When I say the entire atmosphere shifted when it entered, here's what I mean. I began screaming and crying and realizing that I couldn't move my body anymore. As soon as I wanted to climb into my parents' bed, I was sort of stuck in place, and as if that wasn't terrifying enough, I saw the dark forms of my parents' bodies simply lay there, not moving or responding. I realized that they couldn't hear me or see me, they couldn't see what was happening. That was perhaps the most terrifying part, the realization that I was isolated with this thing in some other realm that they couldn't reach. It all felt really intentional too. This entity then slowly made its way around the bed toward me while I was stuck there, screaming my head off. When it turned the corner to the side of the bed that I was on, it reached a few feet away from me and then disappeared. Instantly, I could move again, and the relief that washed over me was unbelievable. I leaped into my parents' bed immediately. Once I got in, I looked around, but whatever it was, it was gone. I still don't know what that was, but I know that it felt real. Like I was awake and it was far too real. I mean, I had nightmares as a child, and as scary as some of them were, this was different. It was the most powerfully evil thing that I've ever encountered, and it was extremely memorable because of how terrifying it was. I wasn't a sleepwalker, and as a mere three or four year old child, I could never have conceived of this on my own. So if it was a hallucination, then I still feel like it was some evil thing that was creating it. After this, I saw other creepy stuff as a kid, although nothing near as dreadful. The next day I told my parents too about the dark figure and my mum brushed it off as a nightmare but my dad took it more seriously. Later on I found out that he also had a terrifying vision as a child too and how angry he was at whatever this presence was and that nobody believed him. Thankfully I, I never saw it again or at least not in that form. But a question that I can never answer is the fact that the door to the hallway, it was still open when we all got up in the morning. So I decided to go hiking one day in a state park. It's a place that I'm extremely familiar with. The weather has been awful lately though so I haven't been kayaking. My time in the state park has been spent kayaking. I was the only person out there because the weather wasn't great. I was on the orange trail, maybe two miles in, when all of a sudden I had the feeling of just being watched. I do have a bit of a sixth sense for this. If I feel like I'm being watched, there's an 80% chance that I am being watched. So I stopped, watched for a second. As I started back in, I suddenly saw quick paced movement out in the brush and maybe 50 yards from where I was. Something was trying to avoid being seen. Weird. I continued on though. As I walked down the trail I continued to feel watched when all of a sudden as I'm walking I hear a, a maniacal laughter out in the brush maybe 20 yards to my left. Now I was the only person around I hadn't seen another person in the entire park, and this really unsettled me. I quickly moved on, I tried to put it out of my mind, thinking that I must have just imagined it. But maybe two minutes later, I hear the same maniacal laugh off to my left, this time a bit closer. I decided at this that I need to pick up the pace substantially. Less than a minute later, I hear the laughter right behind me, and there's an enormous amount of rustling and noise coming from the brush. I realized that whatever this was, was now right behind me. And I just ran. I didn't look back, I just legged it. Something was telling me to run, and run as far as I could. Within a mile, I, I was sucking wind. I had put every ounce of energy into my escape. I ended up becoming too weak to run. I stopped for a rest. I didn't want to get bull rush, so... I turned around, faced the direction that I'd been running from, and I took a knee. I was starting to calm down, but I still didn't feel safe, I guess. I told myself that 
I had to keep going. As I struggled to my feet, I, I spotted something in the brush. A dark leather wrap. I unfolded it and found three extremely sharp knives in there. Like butcher knives. The type of knife that you would use to, I guess, stab someone. They looked like they'd only been put there recently too. You could tell that they'd been dropped there within maybe a day or so. I let out an audible yelp when I realized what was inside the sheath. Really manly, I know, but anyway, all of a sudden, every ounce of fear came rushing back. My body was telling myself to be very, very afraid. I knew then, too, that I had to keep moving. So I jumped up and I ran back to civilization. I didn't grab the knives because I felt like it would add an immense amount of risk to an already dangerous situation. I had the feeling of being watched until maybe I was half a mile from the trailhead. Something or someone was out there. And something or someone knew that I was out there too. I'm not really scared of much. People don't really have the ability to freak me out. But the fact that my body was telling me to be really scared, to keep moving, no matter what, was terrifying to me. It was nothing short of a, a primal response that I just couldn't turn off. This happened in Boston in 2013. I, uh, now 30 female, 23 at the time, was looking for an apartment with a roommate, same age. We had a pretty tight budget, so rather than using a realtor, we replied to ads on Craigslist. It wasn't my first time using Craigslist for this, and having come across my fair share of creeps, I made it a point to never go to tours alone, and to make sure someone who wasn't coming with me knew the address of where I was touring. So... We scheduled an appointment to meet with someone to view a one-bedroom that was open in a three-bedroom house in Dorchester. We get there, get inside the front door, and he told us to wait in the foyer. I like to think that I have pretty good intuition, and the place immediately felt very creepy. He said that the open bedroom is in the guest house in the backyard, but it looks more like a garage, if I'm being honest. Then he said that his neighbor has been asking to move into the open room and he doesn't want her to know that he's letting other people tour it. So when we go to the backyard to see the guest room, we should try to walk as quickly as possible so she doesn't notice in the event that she was looking outside. All the red flags were going off. And then he told us that he'd go back there first and tell us when it's okay to head over. He leaves a minute or two go by and through a window we can see a few other guys that we didn't see before head to the garage. Obviously, huge red flags at that. But me and my roommate look at each other and, without even having to say a word, immediately leave the foyer and walk to our car. We get in the car, lock the doors, and drive away as quickly as we can. About five minutes later, he calls us and asks us why we left. He sounded really upset and told us that we wasted his time and blah blah blah. I know in my gut though that he did not have good intentions and to this day I wonder what would have happened if we went to the tour in the garage. When I was nine years old I lived in Mexico and let's just say that it wasn't a particularly peaceful year when it came to crime. At that point, I was living with just my mum and in my childhood home up in the mountains near a forest, which, full disclosure, I absolutely loved my home since I was a big fan of nature. One night, though, I woke up from an absolutely horrible nightmare and quickly made my way to my mum's room to wake her up because I was so panicked. After I stopped crying, I got into bed with her and as we were falling asleep I told her that I didn't want to live in that house anymore and all my mum said was I promise this is the last night you have to sleep in this house and that was a haunting promise that was kept. You see 
We were woken up while it was still dark by my dog barking non-stop outside. My mum got out of bed grumbling about him being so loud that early and made her way to the front door that led to the front garden where my dog was yapping away. We had an alarm system on the doors and windows so I just heard my mum deactivate it in order to check on what was going on with the dog. I was still laying in bed because I was cold and it was still too early to get out of bed. And suddenly I heard my mum scream, which caused me to stand up and call for her. Not even 30 seconds later though, a man dressed fully in black and wearing a balaclava came into the room and told me to get dressed and I quickly did as I was told. They took me to the living room where two men dressed exactly the same as the one who got me had my mum with a, a bandage over her eyes. I just remember her begging the three men to leave us alone and telling them where her wallet and valuables were, but one of them just said, that's not why we're here. They proceeded to put a pillowcase over our heads and shoved us into the trunk of our car, and after this, the rest of the events were just a, a bit fuzzy since it was hard to tell time and our sight was so limited, I, I had no idea what was going on. But I do remember they hit us somewhere in the forest, hidden between a sort of rock wall and a bed mattress, I think. I can't really say how long we were there, and I have vague memories of one of the men's backs that I caught a glimpse of when I peeked under the pillowcase. All my mother did, though, was pray non-stop. One, because she truly believed in God, but two, because Mexicans are extremely religious and it might dissuade them from killing a mother and child. After being moved to another location, though, inside a seemingly abandoned house, they called my mum to ask for ransom. We couldn't really hear most of the conversation, but the man that we nicknamed the mean one felt the need to tell me that my father didn't love me and that they were going to send him a few of my fingers if they didn't pay up. Shortly, we were loaded into another car when my mum started begging one of the men to not kill us. I drove around for what felt like hours until... They suddenly stopped and dragged us out and told us to get on our knees. At this point, my mother was certain that we were going to get shot, so she asked that if they did, to shoot me first in order for me not to hear my own mother die. The men said nothing, and we then abruptly heard the car peel out, and my mother just screamed at me to run as fast as I could. We ran for a few minutes and then saw a residential area where we started frantically knocking on the doors hoping that the kidnappers didn't plan on coming back for us. To our desperation, nobody in the first two houses opened up their door when suddenly an old man opened up at the third house and after trying to explain to him and seeing the state that we were in, he let us come in and call my father. After he picked up the phone, all I could do was cry after hearing his voice. He came to get us and that night was the first and last time that I ever saw my father cry. So I work nights and I often drive home alone around 2 or 3 in the morning. When the roads are pretty much completely deserted as well, that's when I'm usually coming home. Last night, I was driving home and got stopped at a light. There's a fairly large man crossing the street to my left with a guy in a wheelchair trailing behind him. They get to the curb and they start waving at me and step off the curb to cross where I'm stopped. At this point, my light was turned green and the guy walking is waving his arms in the air at me. It's a four-lane road, so I figure since he's with someone in a wheelchair that he's just wanting to make sure that I see them while they're trying to cross... So I do that acknowledgement wave and stay stopped so they can cross. Then the large guy suddenly starts drifting away from the crosswalk and seems to be walking towards my car. The guy in the wheelchair continues in the crosswalk, so I don't think much of it. Until I notice that, no, it's not that this guy is just a little wobbly. He is definitely walking straight toward my door. My light is still green, so... I decided that I'm just going to go before this guy gets to my door and so I start driving and as I'm maneuvering around this guy in the wheelchair, he gets up out of the wheelchair and starts jogging after my car. I floored it at that point and looked in my rear view to see them both just standing there looking in the direction of the car. 
I don't know what their real plan was, but driving to work tonight made me nervous that they'll be out there again on my way home. A couple of years back, I was coming home from a gig in Cambridge, England, and I didn't have enough fuel to get home. So, of course, I pull into a petrol station. I'm pressing the pump, but getting no response from the shop and can't see an assistant, on the other side of the window, that is. It's 2am at this point, so the shop isn't open. You have to pay through the hole in the window, etc, etc. And anyway... I'm standing there like a lemon and nothing's happening, so I approach the night window and bang on it. Still, nothing. Nobody home. But just then, I hear a shuffle behind me and a sort of deranged, breathy giggle. As I spin around, there he is. The strangest, most peculiar looking, I don't even know what, that I've ever seen. A wide-eyed, scruffy-hooded man on all fours, in a crawl position, head cocked up, glaring at me with a menacing, snarling, saliva-laced grin. I sort of back away slowly, just assessing the situation. Is he just a complete nutter that's escaped from an asylum or something? Or is he sinister? A hole that gets a thrill out of scaring people or something? As I back away, he slowly moves sideways whilst giggling and wheezing at the same time, all dribble around his mouth and chin. Our glares are locked on each other and I'm preparing to run up and boot him in the chops. And just then, the shop attendant appears from hiding under the counter and puts a sign against the window saying, Police have been called. This is enough to get the lunatic's attention and he slowly rises to a haunched standing position and just stares, still smiling at the window in makeshift sign. This gives me enough time to run and jump into my motor. I get in and I lock all the doors but stick around as I just wouldn't forgive myself if the guy got hurt or something. The guy inside that is. And even though the nut job was locked out, you never really know, right? The freak didn't move a muscle for what seemed like three minutes or so, but then sirens in the distance snapped him out of it quick smart. He lifts his head to shout and swear towards the sky, then runs off into the trees behind the petrol station. At this point, I've had enough and I exit for home. The adrenaline lasted hours, but I managed to drive okay and all was fine in the end. And I know that he was just a man in a hoodie acting like a, a total loon, probably high on something. But, man... That was one of the creepiest things that I've ever experienced. So we've been going to a local pool for six plus weeks for swimming lessons. This was the last week and as soon as I had my son, 16 months, dressed, an old, I would say 70 year old plus maybe, lady walked in. She immediately, almost before turning the corner, said, How old is he? Now, I love showing off my baby boy, but she was immediately creeping me out. She was standing less than like one and a half feet from my face, and I couldn't back up as I was in a corner. She began asking in a sort of monotone and low voice all kinds of questions about him and how old he was. I answered vaguely, and only gave as much info as I'd give any other stranger, his age and name. She then asked me again when he was born, and I said August. She then said, I'm born in February, my mum in October, my dad in July, my brother in December. She listed another brother and some grandkids as well, but I was now frozen as those are the exact same birth months as my family, down to the family member. She continued to ask the same questions and tell me the same info over and over. At one point, looking at my son and then me and says in a really dull and creepy voice, I'm sorry, with a huge pause in between. I just want to take him and go. I don't respond to this. At this point, I was starting to get my son's clothes wet because I'm in my bathing suit holding him freshly dressed, so I'm getting a little antsy and also freaked out. 
She looks at me and says in her monotone, slightly annoyed voice, I'm bothering you, aren't I? I start to say, no, I, I just need to get dressed, and she cuts me off and begins to ask about my son's eye color. I start to say that they're blue, and she again cuts me off and asks what color mine are. I then again start to say blue, and she reaches to my face and uses her fingers to open up my eye, then agrees that they're blue and looks back at my son. She doesn't touch him, thankfully, but says, they're blue, just be happy that they're not black, and gives a really monotone laugh. All in all, she made me extremely uncomfortable. My son wasn't in any danger, I think, and I'm the most passive person in the world. I wasn't really sure what to make of her at the time, so I remained as friendly as possible, but stopped adding anything to the conversation after she rattled off her family's birthdays that are the exact same as my family's. I really don't know what to make of any of this. Do you guys... This happened almost 25 years ago, way before cell phones were a thing. When I was 17, my brother, 13 at the time, and I were traveling in northern British Columbia in mid-November. This is important as the darkness at this time of year in the mountains is pretty much absolute. We were in the Pine Pass, and anyone who knows this area knows how desolate it is. I'm talking hundreds of kilometers between gas stations and any kind of people or buildings or anything. We were just about at the Powder King ski resort turn off and it was getting late. We pulled into a roadside turnout around maybe 10 or 10.30 because I was super tired. My brother was already sleeping so I pull in and park near some tourist signage, lock my doors and put my seat back up to sleep. I'm pretty much dead asleep when something just snapped me awake. To this day, I'm really not sure what it was that woke me up, but I was looking around trying to figure out what was happening when all of a sudden my car was surrounded by four or five men. They started yanking at the door handles trying to get in the car. I'm not sure if they saw that I was awake or not, but I quickly sat up and slammed the car in drive and peeled out of there quick smart. I'm not sure if I hit one of them or not, and... To be honest, I didn't care to check. I didn't stop again until my auntie's house at Prince George. It was one of the most terrifying times in my life to be out there in the middle of nowhere, so exposed and to be taken advantage of like that. So, it was 2016 and me, 22, and my husband, 28, were moving to a, a rental home. I was six months pregnant and we were thrilled to move into a nice community since we had lived in a pretty sketchy part of town. We didn't know much about this rental except that it was in a good school district, a crime area within our budget. Time passes without any problems and soon our son is born. His birth was pretty much textbook and he slept well in the hospital, but this all changed when we brought him home. But the first night home was just absolutely awful. Every time we set him in his crib, he screamed. I'm not talking a normal I'm hungry or need a new diaper cry, a legitimate scream like he was in pain. My husband and I had to take shifts at night, so one could be with him and the other could sleep. My shift was always second and started around 2 or 3 in the morning. I tried my best to sleep, but shortly after my son's birth, I began having these just horrible nightmares. I would dream nightly about my son being hurt or needing me and I just couldn't get to him. At my six-week checkup, I told my OBGYN and she believed that I was having postpartum anxiety and even prescribed me medicine and recommended that I see a counselor. Weeks passed by since starting the medicine and counseling and I was still having nightmares and my son was still screaming all night long. His pediatrician told us that it was colic and that he just needed to wait it out. Everything changed, though, when he turned three months old. His screaming continued, but started to be all day instead of just at night. 
and my nightmares became much more specific. One night, I dreamed that I walked into my son's room and he was on fire and screaming. But though I was in his room, my feet were stuck inside his doorway. I couldn't move or speak, I could only watch my son screaming in pain. I woke up from that dream, screaming and hyperventilating. My husband ran into our room and tried to console me. The next few days, I just couldn't sleep. I spent most of my days at work and my evenings sitting on my front porch talking to my next door neighbor. She was a, a really sweet old lady who had lived in this neighborhood since it was originally built in the 70s. And uh, I guessed that she could tell something was wrong and asked if I was okay. Reluctantly, I told her how my baby had been acting and how I was having these horrible nightmares. She was sympathetic and asked me to elaborate. I didn't feel comfortable telling her the details, so... I just told her that I had dreams about fires in the house. Her face quickly changed though from caring and concerned to horrified. Seconds of quiet felt like hours before she spoke again. Do, do you know what happened at this house? She said. I told her no. She sighed and looked down before grabbing my hands and looking at me. She goes on to tell me that a, a few years ago there was a, a fire in the house due to some faulty wiring done poorly by the landlord or something. There was a young family with a three-month-old baby living there and unfortunately the baby passed away in the fire. She said the couple moved away and the house was renovated and put up for rent after. And after hearing that, I was in complete shock. I ran inside to my husband holding our baby and told him that we needed to leave. He must have seen the fear in my eyes since he did not even ask me to explain myself until we had gotten into the car. I explained what happened in the house and how I felt like my dreams were warnings that we needed to leave before something happened to our kid. Luckily, my brother-in-law lived in the next town over, so we went there. The first night we stayed in his house, our son slept all through the night not a single peep in fact I checked on him every hour since it was so unusual for him to sleep this well from then on apart from my normal baby stuff my son never screamed again like he did in that house my husband packed our stuff and we stayed with my brother-in-law until we were able to get our own lease somewhere else and rent a new place I never went back I never will go back I just pray for whoever moved in there next that they're okay. So I was 26 at the time and also I'm a lady. I needed gas and it was around 11pm on a Saturday. I pulled into a busy gas station to fill my tank up. Except it was completely bare, not a car in sight. I also live in Alaska and it was very cold this night, maybe negative 10 I guess. But I was tired after working and just wanting to get home. Usually I start my pump and sit in my car due to the freezing cold but this time I had a weird feeling that I just needed to stand by the pump so I did. I just started pumping my gas when a little gold sedan pulled up right next to me. A guy got out and I was feeling hypervigilant for some reason. He started cleaning his completely clean windows and as he put back the squeegee he started towards me. I felt like I wanted to run but I stayed calm and continued pumping. He asked me if I would help him put his windshield wiper fluid in his car because he ran out and he doesn't know how to open the hood. I laughed it off and told him that I don't know either which was actually a lie. But he kept getting closer and closer to me while trying to lure me to his car by saying that there's something under his seat that he can't reach because he's too big. Now, I'm 5'2 and petite. This man was large and scruffy. I think Alaska wilderness dude. And at this point, I'm freaking out and I hit the cell button on the pump. He took a step back and started to go back to his car and I thought that I was being smart. My gas is almost done. I looked into his car when I noticed that the insides of the doors... They had no handles, except for the driver door, and that really freaked me out. 
I was putting the pump back and opening my door. He was right behind me, slammed my door shut and yelled, You're coming with me. Obviously, I refused and I was petrified. He grabbed my arm and slammed me against my car and I elbowed him as hard as I could. I started to scream at the top of my lungs and thank God for the gas attendant with a big gun that night because if not for him, I don't know what would have happened to me. The attendant pulled the video and we made a police report. I called immediately after that guy took off and I never heard anything else about it after that night. And I guess the best that I can hope for is that he didn't get some other girl alone like I was. This happened in August of 2021. My parents were out for the night. It was just me and my sister home. This was in Manchester, UK. It was around 1 in the morning and I was sat in my kitchen eating food and on my phone. I hear two taps on the window and look up and there was a man in a balaclava waving a knife around. It didn't really scare me at first. I think I just started swearing and asking who are you. I live in an area where people casually flash knives around. But he didn't say anything and was just sort of scoping out the kitchen like he was looking for something. And he asked, how's my sister? Then, a few seconds later, my front doorbell rings and the man says someone's at the door. I don't know how he heard the doorbell because, I mean, it's hardly noticeable from the kitchen, let alone outside. But that's when I was pretty terrified because my front door was actually unlocked. I quickly grabbed a knife and walked towards the front door. I can see if someone has stood there because there's a glass panel in it. But nobody was there. I quickly locked the door and went back to the kitchen. And the man was gone. Instantly I thought about my sister and I ran straight up to her to check on her because it really spooked me out how he asked about her and she was thankfully fast asleep. I shut her window and checked every window and made sure every door was locked. I don't know why but... I didn't think to call the police at the time. Instead, I just sort of waited up all night and waited for my parents to get back to report it. My mum always shouted and lectured me whenever I left the doors open, even in the day. She's just really paranoid, but I tell you, after that, I triple check every door now. So my girlfriend has a younger sister who unfortunately has cerebral palsy and autism too. And although she's very smart, she can't really support herself fully and will probably need help and guidance for the rest of her life, which is perfectly fine. She's basically our adopted daughter. My girlfriend taught her sister how to walk and talk and basically everything that she knows. But one day, my girlfriend told me how there were three instances in her life where her sister basically sort of broke character and told her how she was stuck and couldn't get out and that she was trapped and needed help desperately. Her sister talks in a very sort of specific kiddish and cutesy way. She's very innocent and to this day at 19 years old talks to her stuffed animals like as if they're real. But during the three times where she broke character my girlfriend told me that her sister spoke in a certain desperate and adult tone and made a face like she was scared for her life and literally the next second her face would change and she would go back to the way that she was before. And my girlfriend told me that it would be like her sister didn't remember what had just happened moments ago. To this day it scares her and makes her wonder what if her sister is trapped in a, a childlike state and sometimes has moments of like clarity or something. I'm not sure, but when she told me, I could tell that it was serious and she's never brought it up ever since because of how much it creeps her out. Sometimes I get worried that one day she might break character with me and only I'll be around and I won't know what to do. She's very sweet and we love her just the way that she is, but it really creeps me out to think that, I mean, what if her mind was being held hostage by another? So, I've had encounters with uh, 
paranormal stuff, I guess you could call it, in this house. But I've never experienced anything like this. A lot of other stuff has ended thanks to a local priest that we had come over, a good sage of smudging and stuff like that. It's currently 1.47am here where I live, and I got up to go to the bathroom and left the light off. For reference, I haven't gone to sleep yet, and I'm not really tired as I'm always up late anyway. But every night when I go to the restroom, I, I just have a tendency to peer through the blinds and look in the backyard to see what's up. I'm just a bit nosy, I guess, but... There's nothing ever in the woods, only really the woods themselves behind me for about seven or eight miles. But when I looked out this time, I saw something and I have no idea how to even describe what it was. I'll do my best. It had pale skin, grayish, tall, like really tall, probably at least seven feet. Exaggerated features, legs were slim and super long arms hung down past the knees kind of sort of hunched over as well i didn't get a super good look at it because it was walking back into the woods when i saw it but this thing was not like any animal i know of here in rhode island our animals are pretty standard looking but its movement was very rubbery like it moved without real motion almost like it was in pain i guess I'm a bit of a skeptic, but man, that was the most terrifying thing that I've ever seen. I guess my only question is, what on earth was it? So, to cut a, an extremely long story short, my friend used to live in a house that was well in the woods. And one day he told me something was happening around his house, so I spent the night there to see what was going on. We sat with our backs to the wall and the window cracked just a bit, second story. As we're talking, we started hearing strange noises coming from the woods. We were shocked though as we peeked to see what it was, because between his house and the woods was this big open area, and we could faintly see the open area because of the moonlight, but but we couldn't see the pitch blackness of the woods when suddenly some large white creature that looked like a naked man creeped out. It was bald and its eyes were glowing. When we freaked out, I yelped a bit too loud because it stopped and went back into the woods. The next day, being the curious people that we were, we decided to go into the woods and search. Eventually, we found a strange uprooted tree with a bunch of holes in the ground. We heard heavy breathing coming from inside somewhere, but we decided not to go looking in there. A few weeks went by and nothing really happened. I came back to his house just to sleep over and he asked me to go grab one of the bikes off the back porch. I went back there through the garage, but as I was grabbing it, I don't know why, but I, I just felt like something was watching me. I looked off toward the woods, but saw nothing when suddenly... A I heard a, a strange noise literally over my head. I looked up at the roof which was only about seven feet off the ground in that section of the house due to the elevation of the porch and I saw a similar creature sitting on the roof just feet from my face. When I panicked it shrieked in my face and I ran back into the garage and slammed the door shut. My friend ran into the garage from inside the house to see what happened and I was just panicking, telling him to lock everything right now. We locked ourselves inside and waited for his dad to come back. Uh, this was around 6 to 8 p.m. I don't remember exactly, but it was closer to the night. His dad was in the military and decided to step out and take a look after he came home, and we told him what happened. And he saw that same creature in the distance, just on the edge of the woods, but had no explanation for it. It's been five years since what happened, and now I've been seeing sightings of things just like it all over the place. YouTube, Reddit, Facebook, you name it. It's been really haunting me lately, thinking back on that sound that it made when it shrieked, and also the, the way the thing just looked. It was terrifying. Its eyes seemed very strange, too. 
I kind of tied two and two and figured that it must live beneath the ground somewhere and only came up when it was dark or something. I don't know. Anyway, the reason why I'm sharing this is because uh, I was just wondering if anyone else has witnessed anything like this. If you have, then please do let me know. So, this all started when I was 12 years old. I really don't remember how it came to this, but one day me and a couple of my younger friends were walking out from our block of flats and I saw something with the corner of my eye. I still don't know what it was, it was just standing in the corner. It was tall and though I only saw it for a brief second, I experienced literal existential fear and pushed myself and my buddies outside as quickly as possible, them not understanding what had just happened obviously. We discussed the situation a little, speculated about what was up, but it still wasn't a big thing at that time. We just went on with our day doing well, whatever kids are usually doing. And it would be fine if it ended with that, but it didn't. You see, after that, three of us started, well, seeing things. Well, maybe two of us, because the other one is a known liar, and I'm not here to tell lies. I know for sure some of you will consider me a liar, but... Anyway, that's up for you to decide. It wasn't anything clear though, but you would just sort of walk home in the evening and suddenly see someone dark and tall standing behind a tree. You knew that something was there and it was watching you, but you would think that maybe your mind is just messing with you sort of thing. But soon enough, it went really surreal. All I can say is that we all became pretty paranoid, I guess, feeling like we were being watched all the time. But naturally, being kids, we also became really curious. And that was the point when we began hunting this stuff. And I'm not kidding. We called ourselves hunters because we would walk all over our area late in the evening, inspecting every dark corner, seeking out the paranormal. I know for sure that most of the experiences were just scared kids, their imagination and stuff. Especially considering the fact that we would bring in someone new who did not experience this stuff previously in order to scare them. This was kind of a bait for whatever haunted us, I guess, because we hoped that it was drawn to fear. But two encounters, they stand out as very real. Stuff like, I saw it standing next to my bed when I woke up at night for a couple of seconds, and it pushed my back when we were on a hunt, but when I turned around, nobody was there. And even it started loudly chanting something on my ear, even though nobody was there, won't be included, although it happened. I can't really remember most of the smaller stuff anyways, but I mean, I'm 20 now and it's been a long time. But the first one occurred when I got us two walkie-talkies so we could split onto two teams and inspect the area more efficiently, I guess. This time, however, we were hanging out in the yard and playing with only one of them. The other one was right there with us, turned off. And that's when someone else appeared on our usual frequency. We heard, I guess, strange noises is the best way to describe it. And I started repeatedly asking who was this third person on the line. For some time, it was just dead silent. But then someone finally said, they're calling for you more and then silence. This was pretty scary on its own because the strange thing is in five minutes all three of us were called home almost simultaneously. Me and one of the guys got a call from our parents. The other one was approached by his father directly and that's when we got paranoid over one more thing. Maybe our parents are under the influence of what we thought to be a demon as well. I know that we were probably overthinking it. We were kids, right? And it was just a coincidence, but... I mean, it was weird. But I guess when you're scared, you can't really think straight, right? But the second one was worse, to say the least. This time, there were two of us. And I swear that I would think that I was hallucinating if I wasn't on my own, but... We were heading to our usual place of hunting, a dark street between a block of flats. 
Please bear in mind that I'm from the Ukraine and it's not some fancy building but like a Soviet nine story panel one, wildly overgrown with trees and all that. And on the other side is a sort of semi abandoned factory. It's not clear if it is in use or not but once in an eternity we could see its pipes steaming, though everything around it is covered in metal scrap and trash. Anyway, our casual talk was interrupted when I suddenly stopped to stare into the bushes. My friend joined me and now we both stared at something that we couldn't exactly understand. It was something white, just sort of floating at around three meters high. Not see-through like a ghost, but like solid white. And when I think back about it, it almost seemed like we were hypnotized, I guess. Because I don't remember any thoughts coming through my head. I wasn't trying to process what I saw, I guess. Just sort of looking at it. And then, it frowned. Now, I know that that sounds weird. I don't even know how to describe exactly how it frowned while having no distinct features. But it felt like its skin, if you could call it that, wrinkled in a way to express anger. It took us a couple more seconds of stupor before I woke up from it, I guess you could say, punched my friend in the shoulder, and we ran somewhere people could see us as quickly as we could. Nobody was around though, so the best option was to stay somewhere someone would possibly notice us from a window. I was quietly, sort of hysterically laughing from all of the adrenaline, I think. It felt like I finally saw something unimaginable and we almost just died at the same time. Thinking about it now though, this thing would probably end us if it could or wanted, I guess. And I know that it sounds unbelievable, but yeah, we went back. Yeah, yeah, I know. Nobody would do that, right? That's bull all that stuff but I was just curious if it had a body here's the thing though it was so dark that I couldn't even distinguish anything below its supposed head so we grabbed some rocks and sticks and we went back and believe it or not it was still there though a little bit closer to the path that we were standing on this time it wasn't moving just like us for a moment because it was terrifying Truly, we didn't know what we were dealing with. We were just impulsive, stupid kids. But we still threw whatever we grabbed at this thing, barely reaching the bushes at all. And it reacted by stretching its neck, skin, or whatever it was, tightening on its tendons, or whatever they were called. And at this point, our fright reached its peak, and we finally ran away. Now, this demonical nonsense went on for some time. A couple of years, I would guess. But at some point, and I have no idea why, everything just sort of ended. I don't know how. I, I don't know exactly when. I don't know why. Maybe because we got older or something and we weren't as sensitive to the paranormal stuff. Or because we were getting more and more brave bringing kitchen knives now and crosses and all that stuff to try and protect ourselves. But maybe this thing just got bored of us and moved on or something. Like I said, I don't know, but I know that I saw it. That much I'm sure of. And maybe almost everything that we thought happened was just our imagination. But those two instances, they were definitely real. Quite honestly, too, I would die to know what that thing was and what it wanted from us. It made a couple of years of my life feel like an absolute mess. And it would be nice to sort of, I don't know, sort these memories out. To understand what the heck we were dealing with. Because sometimes it seems like I'm just an idiot who can't get over the games that we played as a kid. And with nobody to consult with... I I think I just guess to prefer not to mention this part of my life to anyone because I know how crazy it sounds. Sometimes I, I hope to see this tall thing again just so that I could know that what I saw was real. So this takes place in southeast Texas within a hundred miles of Houston. 
I was in college but had moved back to my parents for a semester after some, some roommate drama. My parents lived out in the country though, miles outside of town with some acreage. The land in the back of the house consists of four zones really. You've got the backyard with the nice St. Augustine, the backpack which is the section of the woods that my parents cleared of underbrush and kept fairly maintained, the back 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 which is a sort of clearing that we use to go back and do bonfires and parties in high school, and then there's the woods. After high school, my parents kind of gave up on keeping back the brush and weeds from anything except their nice backyard section. So imagine a big backyard fenced by a wall of tall weeds and large trees that goes back a while, and then a field of giant weeds transitioning into solid dense woods with oak, pine, and other trees and all that. I should also mention that I had this dog that my parents let me keep outside. They had a big chain link dog run that she lived in since my parents had no parameter fencing besides some barbed wire at the very back of the property and this dog was not the type to stay in one spot. In fact, she was aggressive to other dogs too, always going after them acting tough and I sometimes worried that she'd get out and kill the neighbor's chickens or something. She was about 60 pounds and not a jumpy or scared dog at all. Now, since I was in college, I had no curfew or anything and would always come home late at night, early morning, after hanging out with friends or studying or whatnot. On this particular night, it was pretty cold out. 50 is cold here, can't tell me different either. And even though she had a house and had a bed and straw out there, I felt bad for my dog so I decided to bring her in to sleep in the garage. I should have been more careful because this happened quite a bit but somehow this dog just always got the better of me. She would wait in the back until the gate was unlocked and I was in the run, gate closed with unlocked horseshoe latch, run around me and pop the gate latch with her nose and bolt off. So of course she did this and me being who I was, was left standing in the run in the cold in the middle of the night. I was angry too because I knew that I had to go and find her and bring her back at this point. The moon was pretty bright that night and I had seen her fly into the weed wall and disappear so I followed her in without a light, called her name and there were some little trails through the weeds that we tried to keep open so we could access the property but these were less wide than a person could walk and the weeds were about maybe a head taller than me so it was pretty dense. Anyway, I'd gone a ways and had passed through the wooded section out into the clearing, solid weeds, five or eight feet tall. And I get quiet listening, trying to hear sounds of where she might have been at. When I hear intermittent rustling out towards the woods, which at this point are just a real dark outline at the edge of the weed jungle. The rustling wasn't the sound I expected since she usually just crushed through the woods and in my head I'm thinking, what the heck is she doing now? I honestly thought that she was probably rolling around in some dead skunk or something and I was going to have to bathe her. Figuring though that it was just my wild dog again, I made my way toward the noise, calling out her name again. As I got closer, it became apparent though that the rustling was not the sound of an animal charging through underbrush, but more like something intentionally shaking the trees. Like if you would grab a branch and shake it and all the connected trees and vines would shake too. I was close enough now to make out individual branches silhouetted at the top of the tree line and I could see that whatever was going on was causing the trees to shake all the way up to the top as well. This was off and decidedly not my dog prancing around. I shut up and froze. Now I hear in all of these stories people talking about how when they notice the woods go silent and I can't remember if this happened or not but... As I stood there, I clearly heard two or three loud, deep huffs. And I guess it, it kind of sounded like a bull, but maybe with a deeper fluttering to it. Not like the tonal sounds a cow makes, but the deep, heavy exhale when they're defensive. It seemed to come from around my head height, I guess. For some reason, my mind registered that this thing was a lot closer to me than the tree line. I also remember the distinct feeling that this noise, it was directed at me. It was at this point too that 
I got this terrible feeling in my gut, like whole body fear, and I panicked. Rational or not, I yelled my dog's name with all fear and urgency. You know how your voice gets higher and louder at the end? Well, I did that and turned and I just ran as hard as I could. Either my dog heard my tone and got scared or she was scared of whatever was on that tree line because as I crashed through the weeds, she came up on my left from a creek and flew past me like a bullet. When I got to the open garage, she was trying to get into the back door to the house, jumping on it like a crazy animal, which was really unlike her. I closed the garage but put her in the kennel and after that, I went to bed. Now, I don't know what it was and at the time I think I convinced myself that it was one of those hogzillas that you hear about on the news from time to time. I've been around plenty of cattle and I've never heard one make a noise quite like this one. Not saying that it couldn't have been, but something just didn't feel right. This was like 10 years ago, but I know for sure that I'm still going to think real hard about it, even if I never have to go back out there alone at night again. So this happened when I was maybe 13 or 14. I want to believe that this was just a dream, but something inside of me says that it happened. So I'm from Eastern Slovakia in a city that isn't necessarily very religious, but has a lot of stories about demons and unholy things, I guess. We have one specific legend about a demon that mirrors whoever is looking at it. I never really believed in any of this stuff. We lived in a small Slavic house and I shared a room with my brother and two sisters. One night I was in bed and having trouble sleeping, just sort of lying there wide awake. And after what seemed like a couple of hours, I decided to go to the bathroom. But we didn't have a bathroom inside, so you had to go out the front door and around the house to go to the outhouse. I get up and step over my brother to leave my room and go out the front door. I grab my glasses on the way out so I can see clearly outside, so I know I wasn't just mistaking things for my bad vision. And as soon as I step outside, I turn to the left to go around the house, and suddenly I'm face to face with, well, myself. Maybe two meters in front of me. It's clearly me as well. Same face, same age, same glasses wearing different clothes than the ones that I was wearing, but still clothes that I owned. And we stared at each other, both wide-eyed and in shock, neither of us moving. After maybe five full seconds, I would guess, he just turned around and casually walks around the corner of the house. I'm frozen in place, I know that I'm not dreaming, and after a minute or two, I slowly walk around the corner, and there was nobody there just the outhouse, maybe 50 meters away. I go to it and I pee real fast and go back inside and get in bed. I lay awake confused and rethinking what just happened. But eventually I, I fall asleep. I don't know how long it was too, but I woke up at some point to somebody yelling. I sit up startled, and my brother, eight or nine years old at the time, comes running back in the room yelling all types of expletives at me. He's freaking out, pacing back and forth in our room. Me and my now awake sisters try to calm him down and ask what happened, but he looks like he's having a psychotic breakdown. After a few minutes, we get him to calm down and talk to us about what happened. He says that he went outside to use the bathroom, and... As soon as he got out the door, he came face to face with himself. And he told the exact same story as what I had experienced. My sisters tell him that he's just tired and seeing things. It was just a bad dream. I never said anything to him. He said that he didn't want to go pee anymore and he just got into bed. We all went back to sleep at this point and... To be honest, I, I never told anyone about my experience, ever. In fact, I hadn't even thought about it until this day. It's been over a decade and I'm living in Salt Lake City now. I woke up this morning next to my girlfriend who's still asleep and 
I go about my morning, set up and put up my contacts, I brush my teeth, do normal stuff. I decided to go to the gym before my girlfriend wakes up, so I get ready and leave my house. I go down the stairs and out to the parking lot, but as soon as I turn to the left to go towards my car, there I am again. But this time, I'm not face to face. The other me is maybe 100 meters away behind a car. I start walking towards him, never taking my eyes off of him. We are sort of staring at each other again. I get to maybe 40 meters away and I can clearly tell that it's myself. And what makes me more certain is that he's wearing a green jacket that I had in the passenger seat of my car. It's not easy to mistake and at about 20 meters away, he turns and walks behind the cars. I lose sight of him for just a brief second. I get to my car and look in the window and my jacket is no longer on my seat. I look around but there's nobody there. I am so freaked out by this point that I just go back to my apartment and I get back in bed. I know that I'm not dreaming because I'm clearly wide awake at this point. But what I don't know is that if this is real or maybe I'm just having some sort of a, a weird hallucination. So, the creepiest thing just happened to me. I, a 24-year-old female, am laying in bed scrolling through TikTok after a long day of work. As I was scrolling, I noticed breakthrough sounds that were not part of the original audio. I confirmed this by scrolling away and scrolling back to the videos and realizing the sound wasn't there anymore. It started as little sort of blips that I assume were just caused by our terrible download speeds. As I kept scrolling though, I started hearing more and more until one entire video's audio was completely covered by what sounded like listening to TV over the phone. I got creeped out and paused the video, but the sound continued. I could hear someone breathing and eating what sounded like potato chips through my phone. I immediately covered my phone. The TV and the eating sound stopped at that point. And I was left with that sort of static that you can hear when somebody is silently on the other side of the phone. When I uncovered my camera, the chips quietly returned. I covered my camera again and, after sitting in two full minutes of phone static, asked hello. There was a, a short, low sound that I assumed to be a grunt and the phone static suddenly ended. I panicked, closed all my apps and turned off my phone. Now I have tape covering my camera and I just bought a VPN. I know that it's virtually impossible for the iPhone camera to be hacked, but still, I'm freaked out and I have no idea what's going on. My roommate just got home from dinner and told me that she's heard the same sounds before and we're both pretty sure that it's probably a weird Bluetooth thing with our or somebody else's headsets because we live around a lot of people who work from home. We're changing all of our passwords though and keeping our front cameras covered just in case because, to be honest, I'm still not sure who the heck that was or how on earth they were listening through. For as long as I've known my wife, she's mentioned growing up in a haunted house. I always assumed that she was just joking because she always brought it up in a, a quiet, light-hearted way, I guess, and never went into much detail. It was a big old house, and I figured that she was just talking about weird old house noises. The house belonged to her great-aunt, who raised my wife for most of her childhood. Her great-aunt recently passed away, and her great-aunt's daughter, who my wife calls her aunt, though technically she's a second cousin or something, I'll be referring to her as her aunt though, now owns this house. After my wife's great aunt passed though, we went to stay in the house for four nights to attend the funeral and spend time with my wife's family, as we live in another state. When we got there, my wife and her aunt were chatting and mentioned that they thought that my wife's great aunt might join the ghosts already haunting this house. And to be honest, I still hadn't considered that they might actually be serious. 
The first night that we spent there, I woke up in the middle of the night and noticed something standing in the corner of the room beside the door. Thinking that it was my wife, I asked what she was doing, and this woke my actual wife up, who was actually sleeping beside me. I said that I thought that I saw someone in the room with us, but it must just be my eyes playing tricks on me. She then said, the person in the corner next to the door? Uh, yeah, don't worry about it. I almost wet myself. I thought that there was some creep in my room, to be honest, and my wife was just too sleepy to process it. So I grabbed my phone to call the police, but when my phone lit up the room, I saw that there was nobody there anymore. There wasn't even a weird shape that I might have mistaken for a person. The door was closed, so it wasn't like there could have been someone there who left the room in the moments that I was looking away to grab my phone. My wife told me that it was common to see shadowy people in the night, but I shouldn't worry because they don't do anything apparently. She fell back asleep right after that, but I just laid there awake the whole night, wondering what the heck had just happened. The next morning, I asked my wife about it, and she said that she wasn't kidding about the house being haunted. People who spend the night in the house regularly see and hear ghosts, but they've never heard anyone or caused any problems, apparently. I remained skeptical even after the next night, which had been after the funeral, and my wife and aunt both reported that they'd been visited in their dreams by my wife's great aunt. So far in my mind, everything was weird but explainable, I guess. The figure in the room could have been a strange trick of the light. My wife and her aunt had just attended the funeral of their loved one, and it made sense for them to both dream about her that night. But maybe it was a coping mechanism. But the third night... I was kept awake for hours by the constant sound of footsteps pacing around the house. My wife also heard them but said that it was normal and I shouldn't worry and she fell asleep easily. A few times during the night I got up to look around for the source of the noise. I even did a, a couple of laps of the outside of the house in case there was somebody outside but I never saw anyone walking around. At one point, I was in the lounge room and heard footsteps from the kitchen and called out to ask if there was anybody there. My wife's aunt opened her bedroom door and said that she could hear the footsteps too. And just like my wife, she told me that it was normal and there was no cause for concern. Then there was the sound of a drawer opening in the kitchen, which we both reacted to and I went to check it and found the cutlery drawer open. My wife's aunt, who had come to the kitchen too, simply closed the drawer, commented with mild annoyance that the ghosts are always leaving things open, and went back to bed, leaving me to my own existential crisis. I just could not come up with a way to explain that away. We both heard the footsteps, both heard the drawer open at the same time, and there was nobody there and no way out of the kitchen except for past us. I tried staying on the couch to try and catch this mystery walker and there were multiple times that I heard the footsteps pass through the lounge room but I never saw anything. Eventually I just gave up and I went back to bed. Nothing really happened the final night though we did wake up to several cabinets open and nobody remembered leaving them open though that could be explained by somebody just forgetting I guess or even sleepwalking. Even so, the footsteps, they still bothered me and the shadowy person from the first night and the cabinets opened on the final night made me nervous in light of everything that happened on the third night. Up until now, I've always scoffed at the idea of the paranormal, but I just can't reconcile my experiences in that house with my skepticism. Talking to my wife's family revealed that everyone who stayed in that house believes that it's haunted because they've had at least one completely unexplainable experience there. They all report that the ghosts leave people alone for the most part, though some who have lived there for a long time as children, including my wife and her aunt, have described meeting people that they thought were probably ghosts and have positive but strange interactions with them. To be quite honest as well, I'm still not sure what to think about it.
So this experience took place about maybe 10 years ago now. It was while I was babysitting my baby cousin at my grandmother's house. Just to quickly explain the layout to her house as well, it has multiple levels. The main level with the kitchen, living room, two bedrooms, and a bathroom has two sets of stairs. One goes up to the master bed or bath. The other goes down to the den or laundry in a sunroom. From the den, there's another set of stairs that goes to the finished basement. This experience took place on the main level in the living room. I had the baby on my lap, just sort of playing. There was nobody else there, and out of nowhere, there was suddenly a crying coming over the monitor, and I could also hear the crying throughout the house, coming from my grandmother's bedroom upstairs, which is where her crib and the other monitor were. I immediately carried the baby and myself straight outside, going right past the stairs to the upstairs bedroom to the set going down to the den and out the sunroom door, hearing the cries the whole time. We stayed outside until my grandmother got home. I have no explanation and it has baffled me all these years as to what happened that day. Had I only heard it from the monitor, I'd say possibly interference from another monitor close by, but... I distinctly heard it so clearly from upstairs and it carried and was even louder as I passed by it to get outside. I am still troubled by that day.